So for everybody watching this full box review on the new mini or new main box, for everybody that wants to just skip to that section of this live stream, I'll put a timestamp in the description and comment section down below that you guys can just click on to to automatically go there. Uh, Cause I, in the beginning of this live stream, I'm gonna ramble about a lot of things and talk to my chat. So for everybody that's coming to this live stream after it's done being live and just wanna skip directly to my full box review talking about the URSR rare and normal cards for the new main box Future Horizon, be sure to go skip to that time stamp in the comment section down below now let's go play some music and get going on today's stream hmm. i should write something this is joker the mission is go Sending out a calling card to everybody Even you, though I knew that I had to study That's when I'm a Jew, never lose Need a couple buddies just to make it through Me and you, now I'm feeling lucky This is what we do from the get-go Gotta keep our head slow, yeah, we see it all It's your fault, it'll end though Just gotta be dedicated, we're playing with death notes See, and now we're elevating our way of mementos Can somebody change my heart, this ain't me They really got a world inside they can't see Only trying to find a way to set their minds free But nobody in the world will understand me But if they cannot admit it, maybe I can get them to This will only help you in becoming a better you Desires are taking over something they should never do Only gonna live because they're letting you You'll never see it Come in. You're saying that my mind is too fast for us. You're done What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links live stream. In today's Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links live stream, we're going to be reviewing the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links main box, Future Horizon, that's going to be coming out on December 31st. I already made a video on this new main box, but today's live stream is dedicated to still talk about the new UR and SR cards and also talk about the rare and normal cards alongside with you guys because I know there's some concerns in the comment section down below and I also wanted to check out the rare and normal cards because I haven't checked out the rare and normal cards yet and a lot of the, like the super heavy samurai stuff is rare and normal cards and I want to like take a look at those cards because I haven't read those cards yet and the super heavy samurai archetype is very confusing and like I said in the video I'm gonna misread some stuff in today's live stream I'm gonna probably need your guys's help with explaining some cards and stuff like that because I just want to learn some of the other boxes and everything like that I like I'll try to go in depth with super heavy samurais but it's such an unfamiliar archetype to me that I'm just like I don't know I don't know much about it so we're gonna be doing that for today's live stream and I'll still like to talk to you guys and whatnot about stuff so yeah that's kind of the plans for today's live stream what is up team attack for game Calum C Bravo, Scorpion, Larry Evans, Catherine, Leo the Wolf, Flygon Cave, Jamie, Jeffrey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up, uh, Pepe? Welcome to the stream. Hi, Tune. What's up, Determination Freak? What is up, uh, Shannon? Thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member, homie. Uh, what is up, Cruz Salas? Welcome to the stream. How you doing? Uh, what does the fox say? I wish I didn't remember that meme. Link. 
Why did you put the fox smiley face? It made me remember that meme. No. Nonetheless, how you doing, Like, Um, what do you think about Lancia now? I still don't care about the card. Like, I'll talk about it again in the uh, main box review, but I still don't care about the card. Um, Sire is super defended on their field spell. They seem kind of bad. What's up? Uh, yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. What's up, real friend? Also, I gotta give some shout-outs real quick. Thank you so much to William English for becoming a YouTube member for 10 months in a row. Thank you so much for Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything for becoming a YouTube member for four months in a row. Uh, thank you so much to Caboose1241 for becoming a YouTube member for four months in a row. And last but not least, thank you so much, Bless Kobar, for becoming a YouTube member for months in a row. Um, also, I need to give some shout-outs again um so i'm gonna give a shout out so eddie grace became a youtube member last stream so i appreciate that thank you so much i don't think i uh properly shouted out tazzy boy because i think he became a youtube member yet again so thank you so much tazzy boy for becoming a youtube member and i think we should be good on catching up with all the youtube member shout outs like you guys have been killing it with the support on YouTube members. I have I have a total of 22 YouTube members right now, and I haven't had that many YouTube members before. Thank you so much for uh, becoming a YouTube member. You guys actually really helped me out uh, when it comes to this month for all of you guys becoming YouTube members just because of the fact that, um, yeah, because like my YouTube, like, yeah, all the earnings I got from YouTube in December have not been that much, but a lot of you guys have to be been YouTube members this month have been really helping out with my YouTube income, which is really nice of you guys, especially because I'm um, going into January. Um, I'll actually have a lot more free time to make content creation in January because now that the holidays are done, um, I'm not going to have like that many hours at work because since I work in retail and January is like one of the slowest months in retail, um, I'm barely getting like any hours at work. So I'll be making a lot of content, hopefully. Uh, but still, at the same time, it's like due to me not being able to work for so many hours, my income is still going to get a uh, shot pretty bad. So I appreciate all the support for the YouTube side of things. I'm going to need some big support in January because of that. So I really hope that I can make a lot of content um, when it comes to that. Um, yeah, the box is not out yet. It is going to be December 31st. But as you guys can see right here, we have the box pulled out because we're going to do a review on it. Dude, Misty, it'll add, she'll get added in 2020. Calling it right now. Misty's getting out in 2020. Um, yeah, but this box is coming out on the 31st. And the 31st is, yeah, 31st is on a Tuesday. Yeah, this box is coming out on Tuesday. Because if we go to a Duel Links right here, if we pop up to Duel Links right here, we have uh, 31st. So that's coming out on the 31st. It's going to be Tuesday. I work at a retail place. When I like either quit my retail place, I'll tell you guys where I worked at. But for now, it's like there's no reason to tell you guys like where I work at. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just a retail place. Literally nothing special. Don't worry about it. Yo, I hope I can actually, I need to check is, I don't think my thing reset yet. Cause yeah, I want that arrow mage card. I'm glad I got another copy of it, but I still need another one. Yeah. I need more. Misty for 2021 hype. Yes. Yes. Oh man. Yeah. What's up, Brian? Big Samurai Synchro goes Synchro and breaks dual links. More at 11. Yo, what's up, Stewie? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Misty 2020. Yes yes um so yeah i guess without further ado let's go talk about the new box i am going to talk about the ur and sr cards yet again maybe i'll go into a lot of detail maybe i will not we'll see and also before i forget let me go play some pokemon music let's go play some of the remixes that i like to play so that we have some background noise while we're talking about i do not want real followers i'm sorry guys i, I only want fake followers uh fiber fiber ad i will admit though fiber is actually a decent service I was able to get somebody to make these beautiful Misty emotes right here, thanks to Fiber. So I won't hate on Fiber too much. Uh, but yeah, let's go play some Pokemon music. And then we'll just switch it up when we feel like it. So there you go. No, join a walk because no money in my banker wallet. Dude, don't stress about it. Watching my videos is still more than enough. I'm just giving a special shout out to the YouTube members because, like, they've really come through. And this month, like, it's actually crazy. I have not, I've, like, I earned a pretty good, here, I need to bounce my Twitch chat right there, YouTube chat right there. That's why that thing popped up. But, you know, the YouTube members really came through this month. And like the earnings that I got from YouTube members this month is like the most I've ever had. So that's why I just wanted to give a special shout out to all of you guys who are YouTube members because you guys are awesome. Um, but yeah, if you can't become a YouTube member, don't stress about it. It's okay. Didn't we have a new box release this month already? Yeah, they usually release two boxes per month or per two months. Um, so yeah, but yeah, let's go to Epic Box Review. Box Review. So we have Future Horizon mini our main box. And honestly, I'm really looking forward to this main box. I talked about this in my video. I'm really excited for Stardust Spark Dragon, aka Stardust Charge Dragon. Same thing, don't tell me otherwise. Dark Magical Circle is going to be a sick card to get. Uh, the Simmer Tech. 
Samara Tech Rampage Dragon is gonna be pretty cool. I think I'm gonna keep calling it Simmer Tech though. I forgot what I called it on my video, but I know somebody else was a little salty on how I pronounced this. So I'll just call it uh, Samara Tech or Simmer Tech, whatever I feel like today for Rampage Dragon. DD Warrior Lady's pretty decent. Changes appearance is probably gonna shake things up. I'm curious, so yeah, I wanna read more about these uh, side frame cards because we got a lot of them as rares and stuff. And then, yeah, it's pretty cool. So we got a lot of neat stuff right here. I guess I could take a read. I'm probably gonna definitely read like this combo right here because like I am so unfamiliar with Super Heavy Samurais. So yeah, we have Starter Spark Dragon and new Starter Synchro Monsters Infant the Fray. Once per turn, you can target a face of card of your control. Once during that turn, target a card will now be sort of battle card effects. We already know this. They talked about that in my box review. Just curious if they add something else. Um, a Synchro Monster is best used in Heavy Samurai decks. It can be attack while in face of de defense position. Apply its defense for damage calculation. In addition, if you have Synchro, if you Synchro summon this monster while I have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, you can destroy spell trap cards upon controls. Cool. Um, yeah, Fusion Monster gonna be Fusion Summoned with two or more Cyber Dragon monsters. So I guess it's mid, so I think I was right. It's like minimum two with this guy. And then you could do more if you want to. When Fusion Summon, you can destroy spell trap cards on the field. That's the number of Fusion materials you use. In addition, you can send up to two Light Machine monsters from your deck to the graveyard, and it gain additional attack for each monster sent to the graveyard. Continue a spell card that is the key to victory in Dark Magician decks. Also, I might... Here, actually, I'm going to probably turn off chat today's stream, just so that we can read the card. Actually, no, nah, we can keep chat on. Yeah, we're, we're mostly going to be doing this throughout the video, so never mind. I'm just, I'll just read this for now, but most of the video is going to be like that, so we'll actually keep chat. Um, continue to spell cards the key to victory in Dark Magician decks. When activated, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, reveal Dark Magician, spell, and trap card. Yeah, we already know about that, too. Um, I guess we could do some example of combos, though. Ethan, can you do my dual quizzes for me? I got me snoring for real, bro. Dude, see, I, I would do your dual quizzes if I could get all those gems. Because what's nice about the dual quizzes is that you get a lot of free gems, Link. But if I ain't getting no gems for it, no point. I ain't doing it. Nah, you're not late. We just started not too long ago. Yeah, more Cyber Dragon support. So let's read Epic Combo from Konami. So first, you can normal summon Cyber Dragon Core and then activate the effect of it and Cyber Dragon Veer in your hand to add Cyber Load Fusion. Um, so I'm guessing this is, so you need Core and Veer, I'm guessing. Um, you can special summon this card. Oh, okay. So if you have Core and you have Veer, you can normal Core and then summon Veer through its effect and bring him on the field. How do you even get Veer? Was this an event card? Because I don't recognize that card. But we're learning Cyber Dragons, ladies and gentlemen. Mostly me. <laughs> Mostly me, boys. So, let's go. Okay, I have no copies of this card. Shit. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Oh, fuck. Oh, I'm, I'm probably gonna want to get some copies of that. I didn't even know that was a ranked ticket. Because, yeah, I, I spent, like, a lot of... So, as you can see, there's, like, a lot of these uh, tickets, like, about to expire. Um, and I spent, like, a lot of my tickets that were about to expire the other day. But, shit, I, I spent all of my SR tickets from December and crap like that already. So, I don't know. I guess I'll have to use these ones for some Cyber Dragon cards. Yeah, I'll have to use that to get that Cyber Dragon guy. So, there's that. But, yeah, so you summon Core, use Veer, and then use Core's effect to add Cyber Load Fusion. Uh, from your deck to your hand, then special summon Cyber Dragon Veer. Then you can activate Cyber Load Fusion to return Cyber Dragon Core and Veer, whose names are treated as Cyber Dragon, to Fusion Summon a Simmer Tech. For the rest of this turn, you only can attack with Simmer Tech, but you special summon with the effect of Cyber Load Fusion, but Simmer Tech can increase the numbers of attacks to deal devastating damage. Okay, that's actually cool. So yeah, that's a two combo. Co yeah, this is like a two combo, two card combo that you can do, I think, up to three attacks. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. That's cool. What about Super Heavies? I need to learn about these, boy. We have 50 and I'm bored. Dude, I'm sorry, bro. I can't do it for you, Link. I can't do it for you. Yeah, dude, I got a lot of tickets, but the ones that I'm worrying about are the ones that are expiring on 31st. But the reason why I didn't do any of my uh, normal tickets is because I have like three copies of all those normal cards. And I'm like too lazy to even bother with it. So the rest of them are going to uh, retire. No, I already spent all my stuff because they organize it. Look, they organize it to where they show these ones. I can do a double check right here, but yeah, 31st, March 31st, March 31st. Like, I spent all of mine up. The last ones that I have are these ones right here. Because fun fact for everybody that's new to my channel, I really do not care about my tickets at the end of the day, and I like to save my tickets because on the off chance that I need a card that's from an event or a farm event or a ranked duel thing, instead of wasting my ticket right away, I'd rather just save the tickets as long as I can. And then when I need it, I need it. I don't spend mine right away. 
So, fun fact right there. And that was the wrong thing to open. That was the music that opened up. Let's learn about Super Heavy Samurai. So we have Super Samurai Wagon, Super Samurai Soul Piercer, Super Samurai uh, Trumpeteer. Uh, we're just gonna call him Trump. Uh, so when you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, normal summon a wagon and use the effect to add Soul Piercer to your hand. Okay, oh yeah, so this is the UR guy. Um. Okay, I guess you could do this in your main phase. I didn't, when I was reading this card for the first time in my video, I didn't realize that you can do this in your main phase. So yeah, that's the opening combo that you can do. So you can go to wagon and go to Soul Piercer and then equip it to Wagon. After that, special summon Trump from your hand and Synchro Summon into um, this guy right here, Face of Defense Edition. So this is the Tuner. I have not read this card yet, so this is one of the Super Heavy Samurai Tuners. Cool. If you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. After this card is special summoned this way, you cannot special summon monsters for us to turn some Super Heavy Samurai monsters. Um. Okay, that's cool. Oh, do you actually, this card could probably be used in other decks too. Like, I think you could probably use this in tribute decks if you wanted to. But it just said special summon monsters. Eh, well, eh, probably not. It's probably, it's probably better options than this guy, to be fair. But maybe somebody can also use this for, like, a monarch deck, maybe? But besides that, let's focus back to the super heavy samurais. Um, oh, yeah, no monarchs won't work either. Never mind. Yeah, this guy's only going to work for uh, super heavy samurais only. Because, like, I, I had hoped that, like... You could probably use this in like a tribute deck, but the fact that you need no spell and trap cards in your graveyard to even summon this guy in the first place is just too much of a handicap. I feel like there's better monsters out there. But maybe somebody could figure out another combo with this guy since he is a special summonable monster during evil players uh, with like no handicaps except for the fact you need no spell and trap cards in your graveyard. So that's why I'd hope that you could probably use this in another deck. But at the same time, there's just too many handicaps on this card to even like, no, there's like no point to bother with this since there's too many handicaps. It's just designed for Super Heavy Samurais. Um, so then like, we go into that guy. But yeah, so you summon a wagon, go search for a soul piercer, and then you can special summon Trump and go for a synchro summon. Uh, by doing so, the effect of Ogre will activate destroying all your opponent's spell trap cards. In addition, since soul piercer is on the graveyard, you can add a super heavy samurai monster for a deck to your hand. If you add samurai soul shield wall to your hand, you equip it to super heavy samurai and it'll be able to attack with a defense of 3700. So that's neat. So basically, you just need Wagon, and you just need a Trump. That's a two card that you need in your hand. And then you can go into a combo to Synchro into this guy right here. A Machine Titaner, plus one or more non-tuner uh, Super Heavy Samurai Monsters. This card can attack while in face of defense position. If it does apply its defense for damage calculation, once card Synchro Summon, you have no spell track cards in your grave to destroy all your spell track cards opponent controls. Not a bad card at all. Like... By the off chance the Super Heavy Samurais do become a problem, this will probably be one of the cards that might get hit since it's a rare rarity. I know it's from Arc 5, I mentioned that in my video. I mentioned that Super Heavy Samurais are from um, Arc 5. It was from... I literally said his name in my box review video. I forgot what his name was though, but he was one of Yu Yu's friends. And he was the one that uh, was part of that dojo or whatever. And then eventually uh, learned how to Synchro Summon. I forgot what his name was called though. Um, but yeah, when it's side frames, they can make plays depending on opponents making mistakes. But not every opponent's gonna make a mistake though, so. I'll still check them out, but if it's reliant on your opponent making mistakes, it might be a, not a good thing. Hey, what's up, B-Man? How you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Saved up 800 gems from the new box. Nice. Hopefully you can get some decent cards with that. But at the same time, 800 gems isn't a crazy amount, so, well, we'll see. Probably the best card you can pull with like 800 gems, probably like Chain Disappearance and then DE Warrior Lady. Those are like two cards you can throw on a lot of decks. So let's get to the official box review. So we already talked about Star Spark Dragon. Super cool card though. Okay, gone. Yeah, gone Zensica. Mispronounce his name, but thank you so much, RFA. Recon, appreciate it, homie, and welcome to the stream. Haven't seen you yet. How you doing? Is there any other uh, YouTube members? Just making sure. I want to see if all the YouTube members are in here. That is cool. Watts 007. Uh, Pokemon's better than Undertale. Anyways, um, so we have Star of Spark Dragon right here. Star of Spark Dragon is pretty cool. 8 star, light, dragon. Yeah, Star of Spark. I remember my video I called it Charge. Star is Charge Dragon. Uh, but yeah, 8 star, light, dragon, synchro effect monster. Once you replace one or more non tuner monsters, once per turn or any player's turn, you can target one face up card you control. Once during this turn, it cannot be destroyed by battle card effects. 2500 attack can do that on the defense. I'm just so happy that we got this card. Because, like I said in my previous video, I have a copy of this card in real life. I opened it up recently on Christmas. And 
It's just a cool card. Like, I really like this guy. He's a new generic 8-star Synchro Monster that is probably going to see more play than um, Stardust Dragon in certain situations, just for how versatile this card's effect is. Now, it can still get targeted by cards like Econ. Any other cards that, like, Canadia can still target this card. Floodgate can still target this card. So it isn't going to be broken by any means, because... All its effect is good for is just stopping destruction effects. It can still get targeted by Econ, Canadia, Floodgate, stuff like that. But at the same time, it's still a really cool card nonetheless. It belongs to Yusei Fuda from the manga. So most likely Yusei will have a voice line for this card when it comes out. But yeah, I'm, I really want to pull one copy of this card. I'm really excited to get this card. I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we have Rampage Dragon right here, which we talked about a little bit with a little combo thing up here. Uh, but yeah, no, this card's like actually like really good. And honestly, you can probably get by with only pulling like one copy of this card. Two two copies is probably like the most optimal two copies of this card. So that like late game, if you don't OTK your opponent right away with this card, you can uh, summon it to another one later in the duel. But still, one card, you can probably get by with one card uh, for this card uh, with Rampage Dragon. This card's just cool. Dark, five star, two or more dragon, uh, two or more Cyber Dragon monsters. So you can only use two Cyber Dragon monsters or you can use more than that. When this card's fusion summoned, you can destroy spell and trap cards up to the number of fusion materials. So if you only use two Cyber Dragon monsters, you're still popping two different back row cards, and that's like 66% of your opponent's face down uh, cards, which is crazy. Um, this card can, once per turn, you can send up to two light machine type monsters from your deck into the graveyard. And if you do, for each monster sent to the graveyard, it gains additional attack uh, for each battle phase this turn. Thanks to that, you can make up to like three attacks essentially, because you can attack with this guy, activate its effect, and then attack two more times. So you can potentially like get rid of one of your opponent's monsters and then attack them two more times to deal that 4,000 points of damage to your opponent. It's a crazy card. Like this, this is just a crazy cool card, and I'm looking forward to trying out Cyber Dragons. Because honestly, before this main box, most of the Cyber Dragon stuff was cool, but I didn't really care about it like at all. But the fact that now that we're getting some really cool Cyber Dragon support that we can go for like OTKs and stuff, I'm interested in Cyber Dragons again. So I hope I can play Cyber Dragons because I need to check because yeah, let me go check Duel Links real quick. Let me go check my Duel Links because I think I didn't like, let me go to like the card catalog because I don't think I have like all the Cyber Dragon cards. Like I only have one copy of like normal Cyber Dragon, you know? Yeah, I only got one copy of that. I guess I do have three of the most of the other stuff though. I might be okay. I mean, it's still gonna hurt that I only have one Cyber Dragon. I might debate using one of my UR Dream tickets for another Cyber Dragon if I really do like the new Cyber Dragon stuff. And then I'm gonna have to use my SR tickets to get this guy, Veer. Um, but yeah, no, this new Cyber Dragon stuff seems really cool, man. It's really cool. And then, so we have Wagon right here, yeah. So we're done talking about Rampage Dragon. Really cool card. Looking forward to trying this card out when it comes to the Duel Links. Like, this box has just so many cool decks that I really want to try. Which makes me sad, because my bank account is not going to be happy with me. Because I'm going to have to invest a lot of dollars to get a lot of the cards from this box. Which I'm not going to be happy with. But I hope that the content that I can make from it will be worth it. Because, like I said, I'm not going to have that many hours at work in January, so... I'm gonna probably want to make a lot of content for you guys related to this box and whatnot. So, I think January we're gonna have a lot of ranked PVP content. So, you guys better motivate me to uh, make some PVP content because I'm probably gonna invest too much money in this box as it is. Uh, but yeah, so we have Super Heavy uh, Samurai Wagon. Actually, you know what? We're gonna wait to talk about the Super Heavy Samurai cards. And like, once we get to like the rare cards, I think that's when we'll start talking about all of them again. I'm gonna skip. I'm gonna skip Samurai Wagon for now because I'd rather talk about Super Heavy Samurais on top of all the other Super Heavy Samurais instead of like talking about him right now because I still need to read like all these other guys. So there's that. Now a lot of people like are saying that this card is gonna be pretty sick. I'm still resident sleeping on the Artifact card, Artifact Lancia, but I will pull up the comment section because somebody did mention a lot of decks that could get targeted by. Um, this card, but still, I don't know. I just feel like I I'm still resident sleeping on this card chat. I, I really am. And you know what? Maybe that's a good thing because a lot of times when like the community or people think that a card's a resident sleeper card and they don't care about it, it's a good card. So maybe, so maybe it is, but let me go see. Cause yeah, there's like four comments in a row that people were just like, bro, Lancia is sick. And like, yeah, there's a lot of comments in my previous video that talk about how Lancia is really good in the TCG. But it's, it's definitely something that we will see. We'll see if this card makes an impact in Duel Links because sometimes cards in the TCG that get transferred over to Duel Links 
So like, oh yeah, decks and cards that are really competitive and really good in the TCG sometimes don't transfer well in Duel Links. So, we'll see. We'll definitely see what this card will be. Yeah, Artifact Lancia, 5-star Light Fairy Effect Monster. You can set this card from your hand to your, yeah, to your hand to your spell and trap card zone as a spell card. During your opponent's turn, if this set card in spell trap card zone is destroyed and sent to your graveyard, special summon it. During your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card from your hand or face up on the field, and the other player can banish cards for the rest of this turn. Like, I'm still resident sleeping on this card because you only can activate, yeah, you only can do this during your opponent's turn. Or if this card gets destroyed and sent to you, yeah, if, it, if this card is destroyed and sent in the graveyard, you can special summon it. So, you either have to force the activation by utilizing a different back row card. Yeah, I don't know, I, I don't think I'm feeling this card at all. Like, Chad, do you, so what, what, is, what is the, um, what is like the best way to pop this card? Because I mentioned in my video that you could use Storm, but now reading this card, it says during your opponent's turn, if this set card is in your spell trap or zone, then you can special summon it. So, you can't do that combo. You can't use Storm to trigger this card's effect. And I don't know if you like, and I don't know if you would want to rock like double Cyclone just to utilize this card's effect. I mean, sure, during your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card um, from your hand or face up on the field. Oh, I guess? I guess from your hand. During your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card from your hand. Okay, I think that's the part where it's good. You can tribute this card from your hand. It's a side deck hand. It's a tribute effect, discard effect. There you go. That's why people were talking about that a lot. I skimmed through this part during my box review. I'm glad that at the same time chat was talking about it, I also picked that up. We're in sync, boys and girls. Because, yeah, I was reading, like, because there's, like, all this beginning text that's just obnoxious. But, yeah, you are right. You can tribute this card from your hand or face up on the field. New player can banish cards for the rest of their turn. Okay. Double Cyclone. Don't, don't worry about... With Lancia, don't worry about Double Cyclone. It's just a waste of time. The best way to use this card is by... Uh, you can tribute it from your hand. That's the best way to use this card. Don't worry about the gimmick of it. That's, that's what was throwing me off when I first read this card. Because I was reading all the artifact stuff about it. But the important part is the fact that you contribute this card from your hand. That's why I'm glad I'm doing this box review again with you guys on chat, so then I can like pick up the stuff that I missed out on my box review video. So yeah, I I could see why. And then this this isn't good for ladder. Um, but yeah, no Lance Lancia is gonna be so shout out to uh, Virgil Drag Dragalion. I don't know how to pronounce his name properly, but he's mentioned in my comment section that this card is good against Cosmic Cyclone Invoked Ritual Beast and Chiriani. So those are some decent examples that you can use with Lancia. So, if you know that your opponent's playing a deck like that, you can tribute this card from your hand or face up for the field, and your player can banish cards for the rest of the turn. So this is basically like a card that you can use to shut down the turn. And yeah, the only reason why it's good is just because you can tribute it from your hand. That was the piece of text that I was missing on my box review video, so that's why I was resident sleeping on this card. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll still see if this card's pretty good, but... It's an interesting hand trap. I'm actually... It's actually pretty interesting that uh, Konami is adding more and more hand traps into Duel Links. Because we have we got Kyroi not too long ago, and then we have this card to kind of shut down Banish decks right here. Uh, do you think Dark Magician would be a tier of Circle? No. Dark... Uh, I, think the, I think the Dark Magical Circle will help, but since we don't have Eternal Soul, I don't know. Like, this Dark Magical Circle is going to help a lot, and you're going to see people play Dark Magician. But we still don't have Eternal Soul, so... I don't know. But yeah, no, Lancia, still neat. I'm probably still gonna resident sleep on this guy. Mm. Actually, chat, I just realized, though. Because you guys are mentioning how this card can stop Cosmic Cyclone, which is true. But your opponent could still set down their Cosmic Cyclone and get rid of it. Um, so yeah, you like activate your Lancia, and then, well, I guess, no, if you play the card, if you play Lancia correctly, you'll be able to play around Cosmic Cyclone, but there is going to be a few times where you're not going to be able to play around Cosmic Cyclone, uh, correctly, because, like, you turn one, have Lancia in your hand, and then a couple back row cards set face down, and then you can activate Lancia, like, immediately, and stop your opponent from activating their Cosmic Cyclone. I think you could probably chain this card to Cosmic Cyclone, possibly. I don't know if you can or not. I don't know the specific rulings on that, but then, like, but yeah, if you, like, play Lancia, like, immediately on on turn two, and then your opponent's like, oh, okay, I'll just set my Cosmic Cyclone, then on turn three, they can use their Cosmic Cyclone and banish your stuff, so. There's gonna be a, so, if you play it correctly, 
Lancia will be able to handle Cosmic Cyclone, but then since Cosmic Cyclone is such a versatile card, there's going to be some opportunities for your opponent to also use it later, since it is a quick play spell card that you can play during your player's turn, so... Um, there's that, so if you play this card correctly, play around Cosmic Cyclone, but if you don't play it correctly, then Cosmic Cyclone can still beat you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, turn one's incredible. Dude, I hope- yeah, dude, Junks are gonna be fun. I- I'm looking forward to playing Junk Archer. Uh, next up we have DD Warrior Lady, and I've talked about this card. I, I- at least I know what's popping with this card and why this card is, like, pretty neat compared to the other DD cards. DD Warrior Lady is a 4-star light warrior effect monster. After damage calculation when this card battles opponent's monster, you, you can banish that monster and also banish this card. 1500 attack, 1600 defense. I mentioned this in my previous video, but the reason why that's, um, DD, uh, Warrior Lady is just good is, um, yeah. There we go. The reason why DD Warrior Lady is just better than DD Warrior is because with this guy, after damage calculation, when this card battles a monster, banish that monster, and also banish this card, this is a force activation. Wow, with DD Warrior Lady, it's a you can effect, so you can choose whether or not you want to banish your opponent's monster. Cool card. DD Warrior Lady is going to be a pretty fun. Uh, no, I did not cover heroics yet. I'm going to trigger it during the draw phase, so it's a good turn one. Yeah, still, I feel like. I don't know if you would want to play Lancia, like, immediately, though, because of the fact that. You, if your opponent's not playing a deck, yeah, if your opponent's, like, not playing a deck that needs to banish cards or whatever, then you don't want to waste your Lancia right away. Like, you, you just gotta, depending on when you play Lancia, is, at least from what I can tell, you just need to play Lancia at the right time, because there's just gonna be times where you're gonna play this card, you're gonna play it too early or too late. You gotta play it at, like, the right time to get full value out of it. So I don't think you should, like, un automatically do it, because not everybody's gonna rock a banish deck. Then we have this guy right here. This guy is pretty neat. Um, I know a couple, yeah, some of you guys in the comment section uh, mentioned some good points for this. This card would probably be good in stall decks also, uh, just for the fact that eventually stall decks are gonna keep like drawing a bunch of cards in their hands so they can play my boy, big boy, I think I called this big boy in my box review video. They can keep this big boy in their hand because if you guys didn't know with this card right here, when you take battle damage, you can special summon this card from your hand. This card gets to try to attack a defense for each card in your hand. So, that effect alone will help out in stall decks, because stall decks, they'll just keep getting cards in their hand, and then if, by the time that you attack into the, your opponent that's playing a stall deck, they'll summon this guy, have a bunch of attack and defense, since they had a bunch of uh, attack and defense cards in their hand. It's gonna be a train wreck. So this is like a, a good, like, one tech card. Like, they could probably tech in, like, one copy of this card in their stall deck, and it's gonna be so obnoxious. And then also I mentioned in my box review video that this card's also gonna be good in your Zenju's, because your Zenju's is a archetype that gets always added back to the hand. You normal summon your Zenju cards, and then on the end phase, they get returned back to the hand. This card's gonna be pretty nice, because... If your opponent gets past all your back row, you can still, like, summon this guy. Since you have your Yo's Enjus in your hand, this guy will get a decent amount of attack and all that fun stuff right there. So, this card's going to be good in Yo's Enjus. going to be good in stall. I don't know about any other decks, but, like, those two decks specifically, you could probably get some good value out of this card. Uh, uh, uh. Can, I, can you give this card? I just want to give it to a friend who's also watching the stream. Yeah, I can post a Discord right now. Uh, there you go. So, yeah, pretty cool. Dark Magical Circle, looking forward to trying out this card right here. It's a continuous spell card. When this card is activated, look at the top three cards of your deck, then you can reveal one Dark Magician or Spell and Trap card that specifically lists Dark Magician among them. Add it to your hand. Also place the remaining cards on the top of your deck in any order. A Dark Magician is normal or special summon to your field, except during the damage step. You can target one card to put a control, so banish it. You only can use the effect of Dark Magical Circle once per turn. So yeah, no, this card is cool. I don't think it's going to make Dark Magician top tier, but it's definitely going to help him out just because Dark Magicians still don't have Eternal Soul. Uh, but still, yeah, you can use this card. You can search for your other Dark Magicians if you don't have them in your hand. You can search for Magical, or yeah, let's just let's just go to the Dark Magician cards. Yeah, you can search for like Magician Navigation and all that fun stuff. So yeah, you can search for, yeah, you can probably search for this, I believe. Dark Magic Curran. But like, like your top targets, your top targets for, um... And Dark Magical Circle is going to be your Magician Navigation and then your Dark Magician itself so that you can just go into them right away. Um, I do know, because I, I know this is talked about a lot, you can't search for Ayatomias with uh, Magician's Navigation because of some really, 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 really weird ruling. I don't, I don't remember the specific reason why, but there's just a stupid ruling of the, like, text that makes it to where you can't search for Itamias. So you can't go into Itamias and you can't like go for the Dark Cavalry effect. So that's sad. 
Or yeah, and you, yeah, you can't go into Amulet Dragon. So you, sadly, you can't search Riot Tamias with Dark Magical Circle, which sucks, so... You can't open up for the Amulet Dragon play. So that's lame. Um, what about... I'm curious, though. I wonder if you can search for Magician of Chaos. Chat, can you guys search for Magician of Chaos with Dark Mag Magical Circle, or no? Yeah. Yo, what's up, Adam? Mm, I think Circle's a 2 of. I think it's gonna be a 3 of. I think I think Dark Magical Circle's a 3 of, because you can... Cause it searches your deck. And then, we didn't talk about it yet, but you can target one card your opponent controls, banish it. Uh, every time you summon a Dark Magician card. So, that's also really good, too. I know that, too. But yeah, no, I'm, I'm curious. Can you even search for uh, Magician of Chaos? I don't know if you can. Uh, but still, the top cards you're going to want to summon or search for is your Dark Magician itself and then Magician's Navigation. That's like the two ones that you're going to want to go for. No, you can't. <laughs> That's lame. <laughs> hey, Ethan's been a hot minute since I caught your stream. Yo, what's up, Ken? How you doing, man? Circle's a two. Nah, I think Circle's going to be a three. But hey, I'm probably going to rock two because I'm only going to get two copies of the card. <laughs> so, Dark Magical Circle is going to be pretty cool. Just because of the fact that uh, when you summon your Dark Magician, uh, while this card's on the field, you can banish a card your opponent controls, and that's any card, so it's going to be pretty pretty nice. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yeah, you guys are answering like two different questions at the same time. So my question on if Kit Magician of Chaos can be searched for Dark Magical Circle, I still don't know. I like the fact Star Spark Dragon is going to be in Duel Links. Yes, I agree. Uh, next card we're going to talk about Overlord Fusion or Overload. I keep saying Lord. It's so much easier to say Lord instead of Load. Overload just sounds weird. I don't know why. Uh, anyways, though, Overload Fusion. You can banish from your side of the field or graveyard and fusion material monster that listed on the Dark Fusion Machine type fusion monster card, especially some of the, the fusion monster from your extra deck. So yeah, now this card is good just because of the fact that you can utilize Overload to go into Rampage Dragon. So this is another card that you can use to go into Rampage Dragon. And due to the fact of Rampage Dragon where you can give it additional attacks by sending Cyber Dragon cards from your deck to the graveyard, that can open up a follow-up play if you don't take out your opponent that you can use Overload Fusion and then go into another Rampage Dragon. So that's pretty cool. But we're not going to talk too, too much about Overload. Change his appearance. I feel like I, I still agree with what I talked about in my previous uh, box review video where this card's gonna like see some play. It's still gonna. It, I think Change Disappearance is kind of in the same boat as Lancia. Like Lancia and Change Disappearance are both going to see play, but you're just not gonna be able to activate it in every single duel. But if you do, you basically shut down your opponent from winning, essentially. So I, honestly, I think Lancia and Change Disappearance are kind of the same boat. If you play correctly, you're going against a deck that has a hard time dealing with a card like this. You're gonna insta win, but not you're but like you're not gonna be able to use those two cards in every single duel. Now, Change's appearance is just really cool, because yeah, when a monster with a thousand or less attack is summoned, banish the monster with a thousand or less attack. When your opponent banishes all cards the same name as that card in the end of the deck. And then like we can go like Duel Links meta real quick. Duel Links meta. Because let's just go through the tier list real quick. And just take a look at all like the top decks. So for a top deck like this, you can use Change's appearance and get rid of Invoker. So that's a huge shutdown right there. And this deck is just going to get hurt really bad if they can't go into their Invoker. So Change's Appearance can get rid of the Invoker, pretty much shut down this deck. They can still summon their Element Sabers, but if they can't summon into their Invoker, they pretty much have like no way of really coming back from that. Um, I think Dark Lords are going to be pretty much unaffected by a card like this. So yeah, like if you go against Dark Lords, you're not going to do much of Change Disappearance specifically. Lancia, on the other hand, Lancia could probably deal with um, Dark Lords because don't they banish? Yeah, wait, hold up. Ah, wait, I don't think Dark Lords banish. Um, Then yeah, hold up. I, for a second I thought they did, but yeah, I guess they don't. What was this one? Add a Dark Lord. Maybe I got confused because of Banishment of the Dark Lords, but yeah, if not, then oof. Oof right there. Um, Anyways, though, so yeah, so if you go against like Dark Lords, for example, Dark Lords are probably not going to be able to handle... Like, if you have Changes Appearance or Lancia, like, these cards are going to be useless against the Dark Lord matchup. So, it's like, you're not going to do much. So, like, I think, like, Lancia and Changes Appearance are both really good cards, but, like, they're just not going to be able to get used, like, every single duel. 
if the field spells up. Oh, that's actually true. Yeah. Well, no, at no, no, at the same time. At the same time, it won't matter because the only time that Elemental Lords gives Invoker attack. Um, equal to a different- yeah, in the graveyard. So no, if you use Change Disappearance turn one, or turn two when they summon their Invoker, then you're good to go. Like, they can't- they can't do anything of that. Even if they activate Elemental Lords first, they can't do anything about that if you Change Disappearance Invoker if they have no cards in their graveyard. So, if you turn one Change Disappearance, turn two, they summon their Invoker, even if they have Elemental Lords up, the Invoker's not gonna gain any attacks, they don't got any cards in their graveyard to give it a bonus attack. So, no. If, if it's like the turn, if you play Chain Disappearance on turn two on them, you can still shut down their deck. But you are correct on the fact that like late game, if you want to try to do that, they wouldn't be, they the Invoker wouldn't get banished. But like early game turn two, yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Um, But yeah, Ritual Beast, Ritual Beast can get hurt by this. Yeah, yeah, Ritual Beast could get hurt by this. You can target the Tamer Elder and just get rid of that guy. Um, they might be able to do some comeback plays, but yeah, you can get rid of that. Other than that, just Tamer Elder. So this deck can still kind of play around. Chain Disappearance, to be fair. Um, oh, I, this might hurt this deck. Yeah, oh yeah, you could probably hurt Chiriani's. Um, cause does this just say Summon? Yeah, it's Summoned. Yeah, so you can actually use this on Bootleg 6 Ams and shut them down. So this is another deck that can get hurt pretty bad from Chain Disappearance. Um, certain Blackwing. Yeah, you can also do this against Blackwings, because you can let your opponent, like, do their combo, and then when they summon their, like, low-level tuner monsters, you play Chain Disappearance and get rid of their low-level tuner monster. They can't go for the Synchro Summon. They still will be able to go through the Synchro Summon with Gale, but, like, you can banish their, like, level 1 tuner guys, and then you can stop them from going into their combo. Unless they negate it, of course. So, yeah, like, Chain Disappearance is, like, a really, really, really good card, but it's just not gonna be used in every single duel just because of the fact that it only works against certain decks. So it's definitely something interesting. So yeah, like when you pop off of this card, you get an insta win, but there's gonna be times where it's gonna break really badly on you. You know what I'm saying? So very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Changes appearance though, really cool card. A junk Archer I'm so looking forward to. Dude, I'm still debating with my, cause I still have one more UR Dream Ticket. And I'm debating if I want to get a third Quick Draw Synchron for a Synchro Summoning uh, Shenanigans or a second copy Cyber Dragon, if I enjoy Cyber Dragons. I mean, oh, we're actually, I forgot, in the leaks, we're actually getting a Dream Ticket soon. So I might be okay. I might be able to get a third copy of Quick Draw and a second copy of Cyber Dragon. Cause we're actually getting another Dream Ticket soon. So I might be okay. Never mind. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. But Junk Archer is really cool. Because it's a 7 star Synchro Monster, and even though it takes Junk Synchron plus one or more non tuner monsters, as most of you guys know, you can use Quick Draw Synchron and uh, Cobalt Hedgehog. And then you go for the combo of playing your Quick Draw Synchron, Special Summon it, Special Summon your Quick Draw Synchron through Quick Draw Synchron's effect by discarding your Cobalt Hedgehog. And then you can Special Summon Cobalt Hedgehog after you summon your Quick Draw Synchro, uh, Quick Draw Synchron. Special Summon your Cobalt Hedgehog and go for a 7 star Synchro Summon into Junk Archer or Nitro Warrior. So I'm looking forward to trying out Junk Archer when this card comes out. Once per turn, you can target monster opponent controls and banish it during the end phase of this turn, returns the opponent's side of the field in the same battle position. Hopefully, my opponent got no Lancias, so we can cheese our Junk Archer and go for the dub. Go for the dub right there, so. Yeah. Yeah, it is super situational, but like still, even though Change Disappearance is super situational, if you do pop off with it, you insta win the duel. So. It, it, it's like, do you want to get that insta win? Is Invokes giving you some troubles? Play just Chain Disappearance today. But yeah, I'm looking forward to Junk Archer. It's going to be nice to do some cheese wins. Like, banish your one monster that your opponent controls and then go for the direct attack for some cheese. That'd be fun to do. That'd be fun to do. We talked about Cyber Dragon Core a little bit. Once card is summoned, you can add a Cyber Spawn Trap card. We can go take a look at all, like the Cyber Spawn Trap cards so that we can play. So, yeah, we can add all sorts of... Wait, 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 wait. Nah, I don't think it would work for that. Can you search for uh, Cyber Angel cards? That'd be funny if you could, but I don't think you can. But yeah, no, you can search for... Um, yeah, you can search for the Evolution Burst. Oh wait, no, you only can... Yeah, you only can search for Cyber Repair Plant. Um, yeah, you only can search for Cyber Repair Plant. Cyber Network. Probably this card, yeah, Cyber. I think you can search for Cyber or Shadow. And then what else? Can you search for Cyber Shield, or does that not count? Because I believe the state's like in the 
card name. I don't know, but yeah, you, the cards that you're just going to search for is like the Fusion, um, Cyber Fusion card that's in this box. You can search for like these cards right here if you want to, I guess. Nothing too crazy though. Nothing too crazy. Cyber Repair Plant. And you're probably only going to search for like Cyber Repair Plant. And what is it? What is it? And then what is the guy? Oh, Cyber Load. That's probably like the only ones you're going to search for with Core. I don't know if you can search for any like other meme cards. But um, yeah. I'd rather play Lance and stop invoked. <laughs> But yeah, no, core's neat. You can do that. If your opponent controls a monster, control no monsters, you can banish card from graveyard, special summon dra cyber dragon monster from your deck. Now you can use cyber dragon core effect per turn only once a turn. This card's name comes cyber dragon while it's on the field or in the graveyard. So yeah, no, this card's cool. And this combo that Doom Links mentioned is probably a pretty optimal combo to go into your rampage dragon. So core is really cool. Uh, we'll talk about soul piercer later and soul peacemaker later. I'm really looking forward to this card. I am so hyped to pull thunder dragon duo. That's a card that I'm really looking forward to right now. Because, if we go to, what's it called? Let me go to my Chaos Dragon deck. I forgot which character. Yeah, I think I play Yugi. Also, sorry for any lag, guys. I don't know why my stream was having some frame dips. That's actually really weird. But we still have 100 people, so we'll see if we're fine for the rest of the stream. I think this is a net deck. Yeah, I think that's a net deck right there. Uh, where's my Dragon deck? Okay. So I'm really looking forward to getting Dragon Duo, Thunder Dragon Duo, because this card cannot be normal summoner set. It must be special summon from your hand by banishing a light and dark monster from your graveyard. Once per turn, if a monster effect is activated in the hand, this card gains three attack until the end of the turn. When this card destroys opponent's monster by battle, you can banish one card in your graveyard, add a Thunder Dragon monster from your deck to your hand. Once per turn during your opponent's end phase, you can target one of your banished cards, place it on the bottom, top, or bottom of your deck. I am so hyped for Thunder Dragon Duo because I want to play it in my 30 card Chaos Dragon deck. I still need to pull more copies of Chaos Sorcerer, but what I want to do is I want to get rid of my boy Dark Flare Dragon. Dark Flare Dragon, you are the homie. You have an amazing artwork, but once Thunder Dragon Duo comes into the game, you are dropped homie because Thunder Dragon Duo is just so much better than Dark Flare Dragon in every way. It's the dark attribute monster, can be special summoned by banishing a light and dark monster from your graveyard. It is just more like, Make it makes more sense in Dark Flare because Dark Flare you can, you can special summon this card from your hand by banishing a light dark monster from your graveyard, but like that's about it. I I can't really use its other effects for once per turn. You can send a dragon type monster from your hand and a dragon type monster from your deck to your graveyard, target a card in either player's graveyard, and banish the target. I, there's just not much point. So I feel like the Thunder Dragon Duo is just a much better replacement for Dark Flare Dragon because Thunder Dragon Duo has higher attack, and you can target your banished cards and put them on the top or bottom of your deck. So if there's any cards that I banish by the off chance, I can just add it back. Which is just crazy good, dude. Crazy good. I'm so hyped for Thunder Dragon Duo. He's gonna replace my Dark Flare Dragon. And then what I also need to do is I need more copies of Chaos Sorcerer. Once I get Thunder Dragon Duo and Chaos Sorcerer, like three copies of both of those guys in this deck, bro, this deck is gonna be so much fun to play. I'm gonna be so happy and I'm gonna have so much fun with this deck, man. Like, I, 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 I actually, I might need just one Chaos Sorcerer and like two copies of Thunder Dragon Duo. I might consider doing that. But yeah, Chaos Sorcerer is super good. Thunder Dragon Duo is also super good. I am so hyped to play. The only downside from replacing Dark Flare Dragon with Thunder Dragon Duo is the fact that I can't, because with Thunder Dragon Duo, you can't tribute summon him. Dark Flare Dragon, you can. Dark Flare Dragon, you can tribute off monsters. And sometimes this deck gets pretty clogged. So sometimes having that option to tribute summon is good. But at the same time, I still got Red Eyes and I still got Light Pulsar, so. I'm really looking at the Thunder Dragon Duo. I am so hyped for that. So hyped for that. Um, so yeah. This is gonna be sick. This card is gonna be fun. Uh, Light Pulsar Dragon Effect. Light Pulsar Dragon won't be able to use that. And I guess you are right that since we are dropping Light Pulsar, we won't be able to summon Dark Flare Dragon. But in most situations, I should have a Red Eyes Black Dragon in my graveyard to trigger Light Pulsar's effect. I don't think I've ever summoned Light Pulsar. I don't think I've ever summoned uh, Dark Flare Dragon um, through Light Pulsar. It's mostly been Red Eyes Black Dragon. So you are right, I lose that synergy, but I still feel like the Thunder Dragon Duo is still the better card at the end of the day, even though there's going to be a little bit of handicaps to it, dude. Um, but yeah, still, I am so looking forward to that. I am actually really hyped. So Thunder Dragon Duo, looking forward to that card. Really cool. Now, I have no clue how well it'll be in Thunder Dragons, but I don't care, because he's going to go in my Chaos Dragon deck. So, super cool card right there. I talked about Ridey Driver a little bit. This card is like, 
a very niche card. It's a one star machine tuner effect monster. For a synchro summon, you can substitute this card for any synchro tuner. If this card is normal summon, you can special summon lefty driver from your hand, deck, or graveyard. You only can use the effect of righty driver once per turn. Like, I don't know. Like, this card seems to be only good for, like, synchro summoning into, like, some low star synchro monsters. But at the same time, there's not, not a lot of, like, low level synchro monsters that are crazy. All Lefty Driver and Righty Driver are telling me is that Konami might consider adding some Excel synchroing and some synchro tuners in the future of the links, because these cards will be great to go into those um, synchro tuners. But that's about it. Because, yeah, because you use a Righty Driver to... Um, yeah, because you can use this as a substitute for any synchro a synchron tuner, which is cool. But yeah, this card is normal summon. You can special summon a Lefty Driver from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Um, and then, so, Lefty Driver, all he does is that if this card is special summon, you can make this card become a level 3 until the end of the turn. During your main phase, except the turn this card is in the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard to add a Righty Driver. Like, I don't see the value. Honestly, all I see is the fact that you can just use this for some Excel synchro summoning. Um, yeah, it's only good for like level 3 and 4 synchro, synchro summoning, that's it. So, there's that right there. Um, yeah, I want to get my hand on more Red Eyes Monsters. Yeah, for sure, man. Red Eyes Monsters are really cool. But yeah. Other than that, I don't really care too much. Rush Warrior is a cool card. Uh, talked about this in my previous video, of course. During damage calculation, in either player's turn, if a warrior singer monster you control battles and opponent's monster, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard. Battling monster attack comes double its current attack to the damage calculation only. Better card from your graveyard target synchron monster in your graveyard adds a hand. Um, yeah, you can combo this with like Junk Archer. Banish, you use Junk Archer's effect to banish one of your opponent's monsters, and then go for the direct attack and use Rush Warrior to double Junk Archer's attack and go for an OTK. Probably the best combo that you can do with Rush Warrior. Still, it's a cool card. Doubling the attack. This is a hand trap, and you can do this during either player's turn. It's really nice. Like, Rush Warrior is going to be a nice hand trap to use, utilize with your meme warrior decks and whatnot. And actually... No, Super Heavy Samurai and Machines, never mind. What are some other warrior synchros that you can use? I wonder if Rush Warrior can combo well with uh, 6 amps. Interesting. You might be able to try out Rush Warrior and some other uh, decks, too. I think it'll still work best in, like, the Junk Synchro deck, but you never know. You never know. So you can probably try it with 6 Sams. Here's one card that you can uh, combo with the Lefty and Righty Driver. Actually, you know what? If I really want to meme it up, I could build a Righty and Lefty Driver deck that you can Synchro into Underworld Fighter and then use uh, that Rush Warrior card to double the attack of Underworld Fighter and go from there. I honestly would not mind making a deck on Underworld Fighter, because this card's artwork is honestly so badass. Like, I, I really like the artwork of this card. I just don't appreciate this card that much, just because I rarely... Like, I don't think of, like, so I only summoned this card, like, a couple times. Because most Synchro decks don't summon into 4-star monsters, right? But still, if I can, like, use this card for a video, honestly, I'd be kind of down for it. Because this card's artwork is so fucking cool. Like, it is such a cool artwork. And yeah, let me go read the Lefty and Righty Driver again. Because, like, Lefty Driver... Let me see. Lefty Driver states... You can make this card become level 3 until the end of the turn. So yeah, you can use Righty Driver to summon Lefty Driver. Lefty Driver becomes a 3-star. And then, yeah, you can Synchro Summon into a card like this. Double X Saber Wayne. You can double the attack of Assault Warrior. Gaia. Stardust Charge. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do with uh, the Rush Warrior card. So, yeah. Let's go switch the music up real quick. Um, I don't know if this is like good background music, but I want to listen to it right now. So we'll listen to this little remix for a little bit. Use trumpets here in synchrons. Uh, what do you do if Red Dark and Dragon? Uh, Add a kiss was in New Good Duel Links. I'd, be, I'd look forward to that. It'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so that's my thoughts on Righty Driver and Rush Warrior. There you go. Giant Rat. You can summon uh, 1,500 monster. Yeah, monsters with 1,500 or less attack from your deck. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's go to Earth and then sort by like attack, I guess. But yeah, no, there's like so many targets you can add with this guy. Yeah, there's like so many targets. Like, look at all the targets that you can target. Yo, chat. Big brain time. Giant rat. 
into Beats Bladesman for hire. For hire is coming back, baby. No way, dude. Clown? You could summon a clown? Pyramid Turtle? Bro, zombie deck's got a huge... <laughs> Chat! We can use... Oh my goodness, guys. We can use Giant Rat and summon into Little D. Why did I not think of this? Guys, I think Little D's making a comeback in 2020. Holy shit, chat. Yeah, Rush Warrior only works on Warrior Synchros. You're correct. Giant Rat though on Little D. That's actually crazy, boys. Little D's making the comeback, guys. We 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 now we now have a card that can search for Little D. I, I legit. Why is this card not a UR? I'm genuinely surprised the Giant Rat's not a UR because of that. That's all I need to say. I don't care about any of the other Earth monsters. The fact that you can use Giant Rat to summon into Little D is mind blowing. That's actually that's literally insane. Literally insane. Little D deck comeback is it's gonna happen. We have Kari Bonds, two star. When it's card target for attack, pay under life points to get the attack. Very epic right there. Uh, this card is gonna combo with the side frame. So yeah, we'll talk about Kari Bonds again when we talk about side frame, side frame specifically. We talked about Overload Fusion. You can combo it with Cyber Dragon Core, and then a different, and then you can combo it with Cyber Dragon Core and Veer. Summon Core, Special Summon Veer through its own effect. Use Core to search for Cyber Load Fusion, and then use Cyber Load Fusion to go on the same Tech Rampage Dragon. So, Cyber Load Fusion, pretty good right there. Um, I meant Synchro Warrior Archetype. Uh, yeah, Rush Warrior. If a Synchro, if a Warrior Synchro Monster Control Battle Spawn Spawns, send this card to the graveyard. So, this card will synergize better with the Junk Warriors. But it could still be used with any of the other Synchro Monsters, as long as they're uh, Warriors. So there you go right there. Very epic, very epic. So I guess now we can go talk about the Super Heavy Samurai stuff. So let's go do it. So I think we'll talk about the Synchros first and then go to the support cards. First one that we're probably going to see a lot in Duel Links is Super Heavy Samurai Ogre. Because this guy is a six star earth machine synchro effect monster. One machine type tuner plus one or more non tuner heavy, heavy samurai monsters. If this card this card can attack while in face up defense position, and if it does, it apply its defense for damage calculation. Well, this card is synchro summon while you have no spell trap present in your graveyard. You can destroy all spell trap present opponent controls. This card is going to be probably the one that you want to go into the most because it's a 2500 defense monster, and you can destroy all your spell trap, all your opponent's spell trap cards they control, which is really nice. So this card will be able to pop all your opponent's back row so you don't have to worry about Drowning Mirror Force or Wall of Disruption. But then again, you don't even need to worry about Drowning Mirror Force because this card can attack in defense position anyways. But yeah, you get rid of your opponent's back row cards, which is super nice. Which is really nice. Uh, same reason why X-Raider. Like X-Raider, it's awesome. I don't get it. Why do people like Little D as no effect or high attack points? Oh no, the reason Little D is just a meme. Because like the reason why I find the card funny is because of its flavor text. Little D states, Dinosaur. Yo, this Tyrannosaurus Tot's got a terrible temper. It was just one of the, like... Like, the fact that this card is called Little D, right? Because, for some reason, Konami thought it was a good idea to save ink and call the card Little D instead of Little Dinosaur. Because that's what Little D means. It's Little Dinosaur, right? For some reason, they're like, hey, let's go save some uh, ink on this card. We don't want to print out a bunch of little Ds, or a bunch of little dinosaurs. We want to call it little Ds. So they shortened the name of it for some reason, and then they called it, yo, this Tyrannosaurus got a terrible temper. Like, it's such a, it's such a weird, like, translation of the card. I, like, I don't know if the Japanese version of this card is called little D. Like, maybe, like, the full, like, spelling of it in Japanese, little dinosaur. But, like, when it got translated, it, they just called it little D, and then they gave it the flavor text, yo, this Tyrannosaurus got, Tots got a terrible temper. Which is like so weird why they shortened the name, because there's no reason to. That's why I like gave meaning to this card, because I just find it so ridiculous. Uh, it has a short name that doesn't need to be short, and then it Tots got a terrible temper. And then like, since it's called Little D, you're going to make like nine-year-old jokes and like, ha ha ha, he got a little penis, ha ha ha. Like that's why this card's a meme, because it's just, it's just a joke. But like, yeah, they, we have cards like Ultimate Ancient Gear Golem. Like, let's the Buster Blader, like hold up. Like, you know, we got we, we got to shorten the name a little D, but we also have to give cards like Buster Blader, the Dragon Story Swordsman that could barely fit on like the card name. Like, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Kitty. It's an epic meme. Epic meme. Uh, but yeah, no, little D is just a, it's just a meme. It's just a meme. That's it. That's why I gave meaning to the card. And that's why I made meme decks off of the card, because it's just a ridiculous. It, it makes no sense. Um... Oh, I see what you're saying now, Eddie. I see what you're saying now. So then... Hmm. 
Yeah, I see what you're saying now, because it has the uh, quotation marks on Rush Warrior. Well, then Rush Warrior won't be that good then. So then I'm genuinely curious on why they added it into this box specifically. Because if they added Rush Warrior into this box specifically, I would assume that they were thinking that you can use Junk Archer along with Rush Warrior. But if not, then Rush Warrior just won't be as cool as I think it is. But yeah, no, Ogre. This card's really cool. Uh, what is this guy? So we have some other uh, Super Heavy Samurai guys. This guy, Super Heavy Samurai Swordmaster, he's a 5-star Earth Machine Synchro Effect Monster. 1, 2, plus 1 or more non center monsters. When this card is Synchro Summoned, you could target a Machine-type monster in your graveyard add to your hand. You must have a Spell Trap card in your graveyard. But if you have a Spell Trap card in your graveyard, you cannot Normal Summon or Special Summon a monster. Or a monster with the same name for the rest of the turn. This card can attack while in face of defense position. If it does apply, it's defense or damage calculation. So this card's okay. You can basically recycle your Super Heavy Samurai stuff. So like... If you Synchro Summon into this card, utilizing one of your, like, equip Super Samurai guys, you can basically... Yeah, so, like, a weird example. Let's see. You use Soul Piercer, and then you use the one-star Machine Tuner. Go into the Synchro Summon into Mushi. And then, now your Soul Piercer is in the graveyard, that's kind of useless. But then you can use this card that you just Synchro Summon into to basically add Soul Piercer back to your hand after you use it for Synchro Material and then equip it back to this guy, so. That's the only use I can see through this card's effect. Other than that, I think that Ogre is just still the better card to go into. We have Stealth Ninja right here. Uh, this is a 7-star guy. Uh, Super Heavy Samurai Stealth Ninja. Um, yeah, he does not look stealthy at all. Like, I... Sure, bud. You know, hopes and dreams. Be that Stealthy Ninja, but at the same time, I don't see it. Anyways, yeah, this machine synchro card, machine type tuner plus one or more non, yeah, one or more non tuner machine type monsters. This card can attack while in face up defense position. If it does apply its defense for damage calculation, if you have no spell and truck words in your graveyard, you can have this card's original defense till the end of the turn. If you do this card, can attack your opponent directly this turn. Once per turn during uh, the next day by phase, if this card is destroyed by grave by card effects in the graveyard, you can special this card. Literally, this card is like the master anki for super heavy samurais it literally has the same attack and defense but swap as anki that's actually kind of interesting now can you summon this card um super easily like anki we'll have to see but yeah this card is like an anki card i mean still being able to sneakily attack your opponent for 1400 um attack or a defense is not bad at all and by the time you get this card out your opponent probably doesn't have any like canadias or floodgates they would have already activated it in the first place so if you get this card you can attack your opponent directly and not really have to worry about like anything except maybe like dimensional prison as wall disruption is going to do nothing to this card drowning mirror is going to do nothing to this card so interesting yeah interesting right there no one plays rda dude i play rda uh what did you say link um wait what was your comment link because i'm confused on your question <laughs> Uh, Christian support? I don't know. I don't know. His feet stick to walls for stealthiness, I guess. I guess I could see that because there's those suction cups right there. Now, what other. Okay. Holy shit, they added Leo Wizard into the game? Holy shit, Konami. And this is the last Super Heavy Samurai that we have right here. Super Heavy Samurai Beast, Machine Synchro Effect Monster, 1 Center plus 1 or more non tuner has Super Heavy Samurai Monsters. This card can attack while in face up defense position. If it does apply its defense or damage calculation, we have no spell trap cards in your grave. This card gets 9 dent for each special summon monster opponent controls. Huh? Not bad. I still don't know if it'll be easy to summon to this guy, but he is a good beat stick for the deck. He is a good beat stick in the deck, so there's that right there. What's up, Quick Math? If you're still on the stream, how you doing, man? So those are all the synchros. Honestly, the only ones I can see play is Ogre and Ninja. These are going to be like the two ones you're going to see a lot of play. And then, depending on the super heavy samurai cards, you'll be hopefully able to rock some other synchro monsters alongside of these guys. So, yeah. It'll be a long time until Yu Gi Oh! 7 comes to do like say ads for sure. So, yeah, that'll be years from now. That'll be years from now. Okay, now let's go start talking about these guys. So, super heavy samurai wagon's good. Because when you summon this guy, normal or special summon, you can change battle position. And then this card can attack in defense position. So you normal summon this guy in attack position, and then you can switch him to defense right away. So if you need to attack with him for 1800 defense, that's not bad. 
If you don't spell trap cards in your graveyard, which you're not going to so if you're going to play this deck, you can change this card into face-up defense position you control, and if you do, add a Super Heavy Samurai Soul Monster for your deck to your hand. You only can use the effect of Super Heavy Samurai Wagon once per turn. So what's good about this guy is that all these soul cards are like equip cards that could boost the attack of your Super Heavy Samurai Monsters. So you can add Soul Piercer, Soul Peacemaker, and you can add, let's see who else. Um, because I know there's like a normal that you can also, I think there's like a couple down here. Let's see, let's see. Um, I could have sworn that there was, yeah, okay, soul horns. You can add soul horns and soul beads. So that's good right there. So you can thin out your deck with a wagon and get some of your Super Enemy Samurai soul cards. And those cards can boost the attack of your Super Enemy Samurai synchros. And then if you combo, um, and then for synchro summoning, you combo wagon with cards like Trumpeteer. Because when you, if you have no spell trap cards in your grave, you can special summon this card uh, from your hand. So you can use your Trumpeteer as a two-star two -star tuner monster, combo with Wagon, and go for a Synchro Summon into Ogre. Now, let's go see about the other guys. Oh, who are who else are tuners? I need to see if we have any other Super Heavy Samurai tuners. Um, I need to see if we can... Okay, this card is straight in the field. The graveyard. You can target a Super Heavy Samurai monster. Press summon it, so you can't special summon this guy. I'm trying to see like any other special summonable tuners because I'm trying to figure out so this guy's also two star um because that card's similar to Chris Strong's. so yeah I don't know that's like the one combo that you can use with Samurai Wagon I'm just trying to figure out how you can summon it to South Ninja because I want a way to easily summon it to South Ninja because this card's kind of cool too but yeah for Samurai Ogre you can combo Trumpeteer and Wagon and then because like this combo said you can summon your wagons, add Soul Piercer, Special Summon Trump, Synchro, Wagon, and Trump together, and go into Ogre. And then you can equip your Ogre with uh, your like Soul cards and go from there. So you can do some fun stuff with that. I don't know if Super Heavy Samurais will be meta. I really don't know. I will not choose one or two. I'm going to choose 23. Well, you can rock here. If you're gonna play a Super Heavy Samurai, you're gonna rock Kiteroid. You're gonna rock Kiteroid. You're gonna rock Spear Karibo. And then you're gonna rock the new um, other UR. So you're gonna rock Spear Karibo, you're gonna rock Kiteroid. And then you're also gonna rock um, Lancia. Because those are three cards that are good hand traps so you can rock in your deck to protect yourself. So we're gonna play Super Heavy Samurais Kiteroid, Spear Karibo, Lancia. Dude, if Misty came out on Valentine's Day, that would actually be so cool. That would be really cool. I can post the remix for you guys. I'm actually going to change the song up so you've been listening to this one for a while, but yeah, it's pretty good. Now, oh, which other ones do we want to listen to? Um, I do not want to hear a State Farm commercial right now. Yeah, no problem. Yo, Recon, you are absolutely correct. I'd be so happy. That'd be that'd be so cool if Konami got me a Valentine's present to add Misty into the game. That'd be some hype. That'd be some hype right there. Let's go check out some of the other Super Heavy Samurai cards, though. So we- Oh, this is another card that you can add with, um, Wagon. This card- Oh, yeah, first, actually, before we talk about the other ones. Soul Piercer. You can target Super Heavy Samurai monster control. Equip this monster from your hand or side of the field to that target. This card attacks the defense mission monster, put piercing battle damage to your opponent. This card is sent from the field to the graveyard. You can add a Super Heavy Samurai monster from your deck to your hand except Soul Piercer. That OST is godlike. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon anything? That OST is godlike. It's been a while since I played any Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, so I forgot about any good songs from it. Um, uh, I'm going for that State Farm remix. Yo, I got you, bro. I got you. Man, yeah, no, Soul Piercer is cool. Uh, Flick Piercing Dam Battle Damage to your opponent, which is pretty nice. Set from the field of gravity, you can add a uh, super heavy samurai monster protector hand, so this guy's cool. 
Um, oh yeah, yeah, you can actually use... Yeah, so you can use Soul Pierce to search for another Trumpeteer, probably. Oh, actually, yeah, you might be able to go into some other Synchro monsters. But you can use Soul Pierce to search for Trumpeteer, so that's cool. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to switch off of this one. I actually really like this remix back in the day, but I don't think it'll work too well for this stream. Let me see. I still want to watch, listen to Super Smash Bros. remix, so... Um, and this one I also want to listen to. What about this one? We should listen to the Fiber Remix, boys. I think this one might be better. Hmm. Eh, maybe not. Hmm. I guess we can go back to the Pokemon remixes. We should listen to Creeper, aw man. We should do that, chat. Creeper, aw man. <laughs> Creeper, aw man. Okay, so I think we're done talking about uh, Soul Piercer. What about Soul Peacemaker? You can target a Super Sevy Samurai Control, equip this card, equip this monster from your hand or field to that target. While this card is equipped to a monster by this effect, monsters your opponent control cannot attack monsters you control except the equipped monster. You can tribute summon a monster you control equipped with this card by a card effect, special summon a super heavy samurai monster for your deck. You only can use the effect of Soul Peacemaker once per turn. Um, yo, I just read that without processing any of the information. Um, yeah. Cannot attack monster control except the equipped monster. Ah, uh, yeah, this card's okay. I guess, yeah, you can probably use this to, like, I wonder if you like normal piercer, go into Soul Peacemaker, and then tribute both of them off to then special summon, and then you special summon a Super Heavy Samurai monster on your deck, and you Soul Pierce the effect to search for a Trump and maybe go for a Synchro Summon from there. Yeah, that's probably, because like, what are the other, what are the levels of the other um, Super Heavy Samurai cards? Is there like a high level Super Heavy Samurai monster? I don't know. But yeah, I'm just thinking of stupid combos right now. Oh, I guess, yeah, I guess if you wanted to go into Stealth Ninja, I guess the best way to go into Stealth Ninja is that you summon into Super Happy Samurai Soul Peacemaker. Actually, no. Wait, no, you don't want to summon to this guy. Okay, no, you want to summon into, like, Soul Piercer. And then equip Soul Peacemaker to Soul Piercer. Use Soul Peacemaker's effect to then tribute your Soul Piercer and your Soul Peacemaker. Use Soul Peacemaker effect now that it got sent to the graveyard because, um, yeah, uh, especially with Super Heavy Samurai Monster deck. So yeah, once you have a Soul Piercer equipped with Soul Peacemaker, and use Soul Peacemaker to send both of the cards to the graveyard, you can use Soul Peacemaker to summon into, uh, this five-star Super Heavy Samurai card, and then you can, uh, use Soul Piercer to search into your Trumpeteer, and then special summon Trumpeteer, and go for the Synchro Summon tr uh, with Trumpeteer, and, uh, this big guy, and then go to Stealth Ninja. So, that's a whack combo, but I think that should work to summon it to Stealth Ninja, just from Soul Piece and Soul Piercer alone. So, that's an option to go into. And I wonder about what does this guy even do? You can special card for man. Oh, cool. So then, yeah, and then if you don't want to go for that combo, you can um, special summon this guy. Because if you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. After this card is special summoned this way, it cannot special summon monster for its turn except super heavy samurai monster. This card can be treated as true tribute true summons for the type for the machine type monster. So yeah, you also can special summon this guy and then special summon your trumpets here and go into stealth ninja. So that's another way you can do it. But yeah, yeah, it is a lot of souls. Drinking game. How many times? Yeah, drink every time I say soul. So yeah, that's a that's a wacky combo to go into. See, there's actually a lot of ways to summon into stealth ninja. So you can summon into stealth ninja and org pretty an ogre pretty easily. So that's cool. That's pretty cool. Chilling on the crew in the schoolyard. Finding trouble never wicked too hard. Dude, don't worry about it, man. It's called speedrunning. Come on. Get with the program. It's called speedrunning. Um, so that's one way you can go at it. Uh, what does this card do? 
You can target Super Heavy Samurai monster you control. Equip this monster from your hand or side of the field to that target. Gains 1200 defense. Oh, that's pretty good. Uh, this card equipped with this card. Uh, when the monster equipped with this card is targeted for an attack, you can send this equipped card to the graveyard to get the attack at the equipped monster, but the equipped monster's defense becomes zero. Ooh. I was about to say, this card's super good except for that last effect right there. But yeah, no, if you equip Soul Shield to Stealth Ninja, you can get Stealth Ninja to 4000 attack. That's really good. Or 4,000 defense that you can utilize to attack with. Um, and then yeah, I guess you could protect. And then yeah, you can protect your monster. But the fact that it makes its defense become zero is still bad. But still, this is a good equip that you can because it's a soul card. You can search for it, and you can give it to your um, ogre or self ninja to give them a lot of attack. So that's a cool card. Uh, what does Flutus do? So you contribute this card, special some super heavy samurai from your hand. During your player's turn, when a card effect that activated that targets Super Heavy Samurai Monster you control, you can mass card from Gaber and negate the activation to destroy a card. Oh! So, the method to utilize this card properly is weird because you have to normal summon this card, and then you can send it to the graveyard by tributing it off and special summon a Super Heavy Samurai Monster from your hand. But yeah, once you get this guy in the graveyard, you can um, protect your Super Heavy Samurai Monsters. That's cool. Because, yeah, uh, when a card or effect that Activate the target Super Heavy Samurai Monster Control. Banish card from Graveyard, and then negate the activation if you destroy that card. That's cool. This card's actually gonna be. I think this card's gonna be like a good one or two of. Or if you just have so many targeting issues, you can just run three of this guy, and then just open up your play by summoning this card first, get into the graveyard, and then go for your Super Heavy Samurai combo from there on out. That's a cool card though. This, this is actually a, this is another card to really help out the deck. It's a weird method of getting around like the whole archetype, but I think it's actually kind of cool. So we so we talked about this guy right here. Uh, what about Giga Gloves? This card's in the graveyard, and you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard. You can look at the top five cards of your deck, then place them on the top of the deck in any order. When an opponent's monster clears direct attack, you can banish this card from your graveyard. Excavate the top card of the deck. If it's a super heavy samurai monster, adds a hand. And if you do, attack a monster, it becomes zero. Otherwise, send the graveyard. It's also kind of a cool card. Now, it's not as easy to send in the graveyard compared to Flutus, but I still think it's a cool card right there. Um. Yo, wait. Jaden Yuki is the best main character? Don't get me wrong. Jaden is in my YouTube banner, and Jaden's a cool main character. But Yusei is better. Yusei, best Yu-Gi-Oh! protagonist, hands down. See, what's cool about Jaden in the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX anime is that Jaden had a lot of character development. So that's why he's a good main character, and that's why I can see why people like Jaden a lot, because he did have good main character. Or he had good development throughout the entirety of the show. He was a young, naive kid, but then he kind of learned that growing up, life is going to kick you in the ass, and life can be stressful and whatnot. And a lot of people can relate to that. And with Jaden, um, at the season four, he kind of got into like a dark point in his life or whatever and kind of like lost meaning in his life and then eventually figured out what else he wanted to do in his life too and he started to explore the world and whatnot at the end of season four so he had a Jaden's a super cool protagonist because he did have a lot of character development but at the same time I just like Yusei better because throughout the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds Yusei was just a consistent awesome character he did have character development here and there but in general, Yusei was a character that didn't really like change too much throughout the show. But that's why I like him so much, because he was just a consistently awesome person. He was a super helpful person, helped out a lot of people's life, was a really good friend. And at the end of the day, like he um, helped out the entirety of New Domino City and carried on his father's legacy and whatnot too. But no, just like Yusei is just a just a badass protagonist. He's such a he's a he's a super nice guy, but at the same time, he's also really badass. He's just such a cool character. He's, he was consistently good throughout the entirety of the show. There was no like bad mo- Like Yusei is like one of the few Yu-Gi-Oh protagonists that never had like an evil side to him. Pretty much all the Yu-Gi-Oh protagonists in some way, shape, and form in the show had an evil side to them. Like Yugi uh, gave in to the Seal of Orcalculus. Jaden was the Supreme King. Jaden was evil for a little bit. Yuma became Dark Zexel. Uh, Yugya became like the main villain at the end of the show. Haven't watched Varane's, but I don't think uh, the main character of Varane's became evil, but technically his AI pro uh, friend did, but the main character of Varane's did not become evil. So, Yusei was also one of the few, like, Yugo protagonists that, like, never became evil. Yeah, I agree, Young. Yeah, that video was so much. That was so cool. <laughs> Man, no, I like Yusei more. I, I understand why people like would like Jaden more, but Yusei is just better. I, I, I still respect, like, consistently 
being like a badass protagonist throughout the entirety of the show. But still, Jaden's cool because he, he had some cool character development. <laughs> <laughs> what are some other super heavy samurai cards so i think like the main super heavy samurai cards that you're probably gonna play like if you want to go into stealth ninja you're gonna want to play a couple copies of the big guy you're gonna want to rock three copies of trumpeteer this card's like a must of um in the deck trumpeteer is gonna help you go into your ogre and stealth ninja um getting uh multiple copies of samurai wagon is gonna be important too to thin out your deck so that you don't need to rock so many copies of soul piercer and soul peacemaker if you get three copies of Samurai Wagon, you might be able to rock just one copies of all the soul cards instead of filling up your deck like crazy. I think Samurai Flutus might be a 3 of just because of the fact that you can negate effects with this card. Because Super Heavy Samurais don't really have any good methods of dealing with target effects. So I think Flutus is a good 3 of in the deck just to protect yourself from target effects. Uh, let's go read some of the like normal uh, Super Heavy Samurai cards though and see if they have anything right there. Flute Boy is underrated, good for free to play. Oh, if you're talking about Flutus, I think Flutus is probably like one of the better cards in this deck just to protect yourself. Because they don't, because Super Heavy Samurai don't really have any like good methods to protect themselves. Because you can't rock any spell and trap cards, you just can't with this deck. Uh, this card though, Kabuto. Uh, Kabuto, Kabuto, whatever it's called. If your opponent special summons a monster, you can change as many attack positions Super Heavy Samurai as a control defense position. And if you do, the monster you by effect, you can fire an attack. Eh, super niche, no point. I don't know why Konami added anal beads, but good for you, Konami, for adding some anal beads. Uh, super Heavy Samurai Anal Beads. You can target a Super Heavy Samurai you control. Equip this card from your hand or side of the field to that target. Each turn, the first time the monster equipped with this card by this effect would be destroyed by card effects, not destroyed. When a fast monster controls destroy a balance in the graveyard, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard, especially from the monster type position. Okay, this is another time where I read the card but did not, like, process any of the information. Okay, so... Um, each turn, first time when destroyed by a card effects, not destroyed. Okay, so this is another card that you can protect your monster from destruction effects. Still, your super heavy samurais could still get targeted by Canadians and stuff like that, so probably don't want to rock this card. Um. Oh, well, still. You can still bring. And this card's, like, good and bad. Well, no, this card's, like, good, but I just feel like that there might be better cards to run. But still, this card can protect your card from, uh, card effects. And this gives you float ability with Super Heavy Samurai. The only issue is though, oh, there's two issues. One issue, like I said already, is that it can still get targeted by card effects, just not destruction effects. Um, so yeah, um, it can still get targeted by cards like Econ Canadia, whatnot. Um, and then the other downside is that while you can special summon back your Super Heavy Samurai with this card, the fact that it summons it into attack position can be an issue. Can be an issue right there. Oh, updates and Duel Links is here. Ooh, after the stream. After the stream, I'll have to uh, go do that. And we'll, we'll still keep streaming, because I still got stuff to talk about. Uh, but then after this, I'll do my uh, video uh, talking about the new upcoming updates. So I appreciate you guys notifying me about that. I still want to talk about the Super Heavy Samurai stuff and the Cyframe stuff, and then we'll go good from there. I might not read chat that much anymore, though, just because I don't want to get spoiled on the upcoming updates. So I'll probably stop reading chat from here on out on the stream, but I do appreciate you guys notifying me about the new upcoming updates. I still want to talk about the Super Heavy Samurais, though, so I just want to talk about it because this is a full box review. Uh, but we'll, we'll speed things up. So we have Super Heavy Samurai Drum. Oh, here's another tuner that we can rock in the deck. Uh, this card is on the field strengths in the graveyard. You can target Super Heavy Samurai Monster in your graveyard, except Super Heavy Samurai Drum. Special summon it. You only use the effect of this card once per turn. 300 attack and defense. Um... Yeah, even though this is a one-star tuner for Super Heavy Samurais, it's not, it's not really that good. Maybe you can run this as a one-of if you want to summon into your Swordmaster, because you can rock, uh, because... Actually, yeah, you can use this on both Ogre and Mushi, because we have this we have this big guy right here, and you can special summon this guy if you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard. So, I guess two ways to summon into your Ogre. You can either use Trumpeteer, and combo it with one of your four star um, Super Heavy Samurais and go to Ogre. Or you can combo big and combo um, with Drum and also go into Ogre. Because that was the one thing that this was lacking is the Super Heavy Samurai tuners. But you can rock Drum. Um, yeah. And then I think if you use Drum and big. Um, okay, no. You, you still need to stick to only six Samurai or Super Heavy Samurais. Um, so there's that right there. But yeah, Drum will probably be a good, like, one or two of. 
and another option to go into some of your Super Heavy Samurai monsters, so I might debate on using this card. It's definitely, Drum is definitely not as good as Trumpeteer, but at least it's another Super Heavy Samurai tuner that you can use for Synchro Summoning. Um, Soul Horns, you can target Super Heavy Samurai monster you control, equip this monster from your hand or your side of the field to that target. You can make it a second attack during each battle phase. While this card is equipped to a monster by this card effect, you can special this card and you only can use effect of Super Heavy Samurai Soul Horns once per turn. Um, so yeah, target to equip it, make a second attack, while this card is equipped, you can special summon this card. So yeah, no, actually Soul Horns is actually pretty good. This will probably help out for uh, getting some kills, getting some uh, wins in the game, so. Thorns is not bad, the fact that you can double attack. Because the fact that you have, like, Stealth Ninja right here, you can give him the opportunity to uh, attack directly through its effect by cutting his defense in half and attack directly. And then you can combo it with, um, what's it called? Soul Horns and do double attack. So that's not bad at all. We have a Super Heavy Samurai Prepped Defense. Uh, can't be Normal Summon or Flip Summon. If you have any Spell Trap cards in your graveyard, you, when you take, if you have any Spell and Trap cards in your graveyard, okay. One that is when you take battle damage and you have no spell and trap cards in your graveyard. This and this card is in your hand. You can put some of this card. And if you do, cannot destroy a battle or card effects. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's a whatever. I'm not really too interested as a card. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip it for now. I don't really have any like thoughts. He's just kind of a whatever to me. Super heavy samurai fist. Let's go take a look at this card after I read stuff. So super heavy samurai fist is a two star earth. Machine Tuner Effect Monster. During your battle phase, if a Super Heavy Samurai monster destroyed by an opponent's monster by battle in this battle phase, you can quick effect immediately after his effect resolves. Synchro summon a single monster using materials you coil including this card. So, this card already gives me vibes of Crystrons. One of you guys mentioned that earlier in the stream, so shout out to you. Uh, if you have no spell trap cards in your graveyard, you can target a Super Heavy Samurai Synchro you control. Reduce level by one, and if you do special summon this card from your graveyard, you also cannot special summon for the rest of the turn except Super Samurai, Super Heavy Samurai monsters. You can use the effect Super Samurai Fist once per turn. Um, um, quick effect. Clean this card. Ooh, the only thing that sucks about his first effect is that you only can trigger this card's effect during the battle phase. Because yeah, if you're Super Heavy Samurai. Super heavy samurai monster destroyed by opponent's monster by battle this battle phase. Uh, after this effect resolves, synchro summon a monster using materials you control. I don't think you can use the monster that just got destroyed with this card's effect, so that's probably why it's a normal card. Just because of the fact that you can't use the monster that got uh, destroyed. Because you only can trigger this effect if a super heavy samurai monster gets destroyed. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. I, I wouldn't be surprised, but I think that's why this card's normal rarity. Other than that, this card's cool because. Um, it's second effect where if you had no spell track cards in your graveyard, you can target Super Heavy Samurai Singer, but you control reduce level by one, and if you do, special summon this card from your graveyard. I think that's cool because you can reduce the level of Ogre by one, special summon, um, Samurai Fist, and then go into Stealth Ninja. The only issue is, is that you need this card in the graveyard, though, in order to trigger it, but still something to think about. So I think that's probably it for, um, yeah, that's probably it for all of the good old, uh, cards right here. All of these, uh, Super Heavy Samurai stuff. I guess next up, let's go take a look at all the side frame stuff. So we'll take a look at the um, Synchro Monsters first, and kind of go from there. Because um, I forgot to talk about side frame circuit anyways, um, in the video. So side frames are going to be a new Psychic Synchro archetype that's getting added to the game. If a side frame monster is special summoned to your side of the field, except during the damage step, you can immediately after this effect resolve Synchro Summon 1 Synchro Monster using side frame monster control. At the start of the battle step, if a Cypher monster you control battles an opponent's monster, you can discard one Cypher monster. Your battling monster gains attack equal to the discard attack until the end of the turn. So this card is interesting. I don't know if it's like super good, but I don't think it's super bad. Because like, I don't understand why it has this first effect right here, where if a Cypher monster is best to your side of the field, you can immediately after this effect resolve Synchro Summon a Secret Monster using Cypher monster you control. I don't understand why that's there, but hopefully I'll figure that out once we read the other side frame cards. Um, yeah. At the start of the damage step, a side frame monster you control battle spawns monster, you can discard side frame monster, battling monster and attack equal to discard attack. That's also pretty good. I like that effect right there. That's gonna be pretty helpful. Now I am curious, is there any other like side frame stuff in dual links? Let's see. So I don't think so. I don't think there's like any other side frame stuff in the game. Yo, I got pingoed right here. Who pingoed me? Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Hopefully Discord doesn't spoil anything. I should have not even checked Discord because I got a ping in Discord. Probably somebody telling me about the upcoming updates. But I need to not spoil myself, so 
Oh, we'll, we'll see if people that I talk about in my Discord spoiled something about the upcoming updates. But yeah, it looks like there's like no other like side frame stuff in the game. I know there's like side cards. We have a lot of like other side cards, but no like side frame stuff in here. So there are that right there. Side frames are hand traps, especially some of the self and driver. <laughs> so I guess the first thing we could take a look at is the synchro monster. This seems to be the only side frame card that we're getting. The side frame lord card. So. I think, I think, yeah, I think they're, like, testing the waters with side frames. I don't know if they'll make an impact, because we're not really getting much for side frames. Anyways, though, let's see this card nonetheless. Side frame Lord Zeta. Seven star light psychic synchro effect monster. One turn plus one or more non turn monsters. Once per turn during the player's turn, you can target a special summon monster. Your opponent controls the face of attack position. Banish both that monster and this card from the field. We'll return them in the next standby phase. This card's in your graveyard. You can target another side frame monster in your graveyard. Return this card to extra deck, and if you do that, the target's your hand. So, I mean, this card's cool because you can get rid of special summon monsters. Uh, but the fact that this card also gets banished makes it, like, kind of, ooh. Kind of, uh. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that guy. We have this other side frame stuff. Because, yeah, keep in mind, this is the first time I've read these side frame stuff. So, this is, like, new to me. Side frame gear alpha. Light one star. Psychic tuner effect monster. Cannot be normal summon or set. Must be special summoned by a card effect. And cannot be special summoned by other ways. When your opponent normal or special summons a monster while I control no monsters, except during the damage step, you can special summon both this card from your hand and a side frame driver from your hand deck or graveyard. And if you do, add a side frame card from your deck to your hand except side frame alpha. During the end phase, banish the face of monster special summon that is effect. Okay. So, must be special summoned by a card effect, cannot be special summoned by other ways. So, we'll have to figure out how to do that because I don't think side frame circuit can do that. Yeah. I don't think side frame can do that. So, I don't know how to special summon this card yet. But, when you're putting a normal summon, special summon monster while control. Oh yeah, that's how you do it, never mind. So, I, I, I read all this text without processing it. I keep doing that today's stream, it's annoying. But, there you go. So you can special summon this card through its own effect, cool. Um, yeah, when this card is no or when you're putting normal special summon and you control the monsters, you can special summon this, both this card and the side frame driver. So where's side frame driver, real quick, before we get too in depth? Um, side frame year. There we go. So this card right here. Oh, this guy's a six star cool. A six star guy. That's cool. So you can special summon a side frame driver through, um, what was it? Where's that guy? I just had him. Was it right here? No, I don't think so. <laughs> where, where was that? Oh yeah, no, we're in the rares. That's why. So you can summon your side frame driver. That's a six star vanilla card with alpha. And then if you do add a side frame card from your deck to your hand. Okay. So that's why. Okay. I see why side frame circuits are good now. So the reason why you want Cypher and Circuit is because this gives you availability to Synchro Summon immediately uh, after the effect resolves. So when you have Frame Circuit on your side of the field and your opponent summons a monster, you can summon Alpha, use Alpha's effect to Special Summon Driver, and then you can go into a 7-star Synchro Summon immediately uh, with Cypher and Circuit. So that's actually, ooh, that's actually kind of cool, Cyframes. Because this opens up the toolbox to summon into seven star synchro monsters during your opponent's turn. So you can summon your Cyframe Lord Zeta and banish one of your opponent's monsters when they just summon it. Or you can summon it into Black Rose Dragon. Summon, synchro summon into Black Rose Dragon during your opponent's turn and blow up their entire field. That's actually really cool. That's actually a really cool combo, if I'm reading this stuff correctly. Because, yeah, you can special summon both this card from your hand, a side frame driver from your hand, deck or graveyard, and if you do, um, and if you do, add a side frame card from your deck to your hand, except side frame alpha. During the FA banish face of monsters, special summon this effect. So, yeah, if you combo a side frame circuit with alpha, you can do some cool stuff. You can do some cool synchro summoning shenanigans during your opponent's turn and possibly stop combos that they want to go into. I want to try that out. That actually sounds fun. This new box has so many fun decks to play, if I'm reading this stuff correctly. That's cool. What about some other um, Psy Frame stuff? Um, let's see. So we have Psy Frame Gear Epsilon. Cannot be normal summoner set. Must be special summoned by a card effect. Cannot be special summoned by other ways. In your player's turn, when your opponent activates a trap card while I control no monsters, special summon both this card from your hand and Psy Frame Driver from your hand deck or graveyard. If you do, negate the activation and then destroy a trap card. During the end phase, manage the face of monsters, special summon this effect. So this card opens up six, or this opens up eight star synchro summons with side frame driver but the downside is you're only going to trigger this card if your opponent activates a, a trap card and your opponent's not going to activate trap cards early on in the duel i like you would just be leaving yourself wide open if you were waiting for the opportunity to um summon into a monster act after they activate a trap card 
Because by the time they activate a trap card, you're probably going to have monsters on the field. Because most times people activate trap cards if you're attacking into them. So, I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, while well, I control the monsters. So, I don't know. This card, there's a reason why it's normal rarity. That's all I got to say. Uh, we have Cyframe Multi-Threader. This card becomes Cyframe Driver while it's in the hand or graveyard. If Cyframe cards you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect. You can discard this card instead. If Cyframe Tuner is special on two side of the field while this card's in your graveyard, you can special on this card, but banish it and leaves the field. Okay, so this guy is just very similar to Cyframe Driver, but has some bonus effects, essentially. Um, yeah. Okay, so I, I'd say, like, you probably want to rock, like, two or three copies of Multi-Threader and then, like, one copy of Driver. So that, hopefully, that one copy of Driver just stays in your deck. But multi-threader is another side frame driver that you can combo with side frame alpha. So yeah, side frames sound really cool, but we just don't have all the cards for it, from what I could tell. But it seems like a really cool deck. Like, I I'm looking forward to just trying it out. Yeah, because um, I think the best way to play this deck is to just probably rock alpha. Yeah, rock the alpha, rock the circuit. Like, three copies of alpha, three copies of circuit. And then rock like one frame driver, and then rock like other psychic stuff like the psychic wielder cards and whatnot. That's probably how we're gonna play it, just because we don't have a bunch of side frame cards in the game. I'll have to test out this deck. There's so many cool decks to play from this box. I'm really looking forward to investing into this box. So there just sounds like so many fun cards to play. So that's cool. I like it. Um, the other stuff we should talk about before I end the stream and make a video on the new upcoming updates. Let's go take a look at some of the other Akatari. I guess we could take a look at artifacts. Yeah, yeah, let's go take a look at artifacts. Because there's some other artifact cards that seem neat. So here's one artifact card. Uh, this is a five star one. Uh, you can set this card from your spell trap on the spell card. Your opponent's turn, if the set cards in the spell trap is destroyed instead of the graveyard, spell summon it. This card special summon during your opponent's turn, destroy with two set cards you control. And then, okay, so what this card's purpose is, is just to blow up a bunch of your artifacts and then summon them onto the field. So this guy is just gonna open up plays to summon a bunch of artifacts. That's the only purpose of this guy. What does this artifact do? Let's set card, you can set this card from your spell and trap card zone spell card. During your opponent's turn, is a set card in your spell and trap card is destroyed by a graveyard, special summon it. During your opponent's turn, each time an artifact monster special summon, draw a card. And this controls face of card activate and solve this effect. Okay, so not horrible. 1600 attack. How much does this guy have? 1400 attack. And how much does this one have? 1700 attack. Okay. Interesting. So this card gives you draw power. And this card opens up plays to summon a bunch of your artifacts. Because this card can destroy your other artifacts. So that's fun. Uh, what about the other artifact cards? Because there's some in here. Uh, what does this artifact do? Yep. So same thing as all the other artifacts. You can set this card in your spell trap card zone. And this, if it's destroyed and set the graveyard, you can special summon it. Uh, this card is special summon during your opponent's turn. You can target artifact monster in a graveyard. Set that targeting spell trap card zone spell card. This one's actually not bad because he's a 2,000 attack new monster, so that would be a beat stick. And you can get your other artifacts from your graveyard and put them back into your spell trap card zone. So then you can hopefully go into other plays to summon your artifacts. So that guy's actually kind of cool. Uh, same thing with the other artifacts. You can set this card, and then if this set card is destroyed, you can special summon it. This card is special summon during your opponent's turn. Artifact monsters cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects at the end of the turn. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, this one, when this card is destroyed from the spell trap card zone sent to the graveyard, special summon it. When it's uh, special summoned during your opponent's turn, your opponent cannot target artifact monsters for uh, with attacks. So this one cannot be destroyed by opponent card effects, and this one cannot be destroyed by attacks. Okay. Or like, it helps your other artifacts not be destroyed by attacks. Uh, this one, when this card is destroyed and sent to your graveyard, Oh yeah, yeah, so this one, when a artifact cards is strength in the graveyard, you can spell this card for man. Oh, this is another good one for the deck, because this is another beat stick that you can use. So when you're going into your plays with your artifacts and destroy a bunch of them, you can spell some of this guy, or spell some of this girl, and destroy stuff. Or, have a 2300 uh, attacking beat stick. So that's neat. Other than that, yeah, nothing too crazy right there. Nothing too crazy. Uh, so that's cool. Some other stuff that we probably should take a look at. It's like these new heroic cards. So there's no heroic cards in here. It seems to be just in the rares and stuff. What are these heroic challengers? And actually, do we even have any heroic cards in Duel Links? Already? Oh, we do. We have heroic gift. But that's not really, like, part of the archetype. Heroic challenger, sword shield. During either player's turn, you can control a heroic monster. You can set this card from your enter to your grave. For us to turn, take no battle damage. Your heroic monster can destroy a battle. Okay, so that's, uh, can keep him on the field, that's cool. 
And then the rest of them... Oh yeah, there's a trap card right here. Heroic Retribution Sword, target a face of heroic monster control. Put its target to the target. All battle damage you take from battles involving the equipped monster is also afflicted to your opponent. After damage calculation, destroy any monster the battles equipped card. That's cool. Um, we have Heroic Challenger, Challenger Spartan. Once per turn, when your opponent's monster collects an attack, target another hero monster you control. This card gains an attack equal to the face of monster's original attack to the end of the battle phase. That's cool. Warhammer. Once card destroys the opponent's monster by battle and sends a graveyard, you can equip the destroyed monster with this card. And then this card gains attack equal to equipped monster attack. Not bad. Uh, the only issue is, is like it's not easily special summonable. If this card is easily special summonable, it would be a little bit better. Ambush Shield Soldier. During your standby phase, you contribute this card, special summon up to two hero challenger monsters from hand or graveyard, except Ambush Soldier. Um, okay, so actually you can special summon a Warhammer. You can do it through uh, Ambush. You know, use the effect of this card once per turn. When summoned this way, you can banish this card from your graveyard. All hero challengers you control become level one. Dude, maybe we'll get Xyz summoning in the future and use uh, rank one uh, Xyz summoning. Okay, so you actually can summon two war hammers and then basically destroy your opponent's monsters and then equip them. That's fun. That's, that's cute. And then we have class sword. Special summon by the effect of hero challenger monster. You can add a hero challenger from your deck to your hand. You only can use the effect of hero challenger once per turn. Um. Okay. So this deck is not good, but it seems fun. I'll probably try that in a duel room. Um, some other cards that caught my eye. We have a cyber card that I didn't take a look at. Face cyber dragons with different levels from your hand, face up, field, and or graveyard. Then destroy equal number of cards your opponent controls. If this card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, you can add a cyber spell and trap card from your deck to your hand. You only can use the effect of each of cybernetic overflow once per turn. Ow, oh, oh, this card's actually sick. Um, oh yeah, so you can search with this with cyber dragon core. And you can get rid of your opponent's uh, cards. So you banish Cyber Dragons from your hand, face them in the field or graveyard, and destroy equal amount of cards your opponent controls. And then I believe you can combo your um, Cyber Load Fusion by shuffling fusion materials from the deck from the field and our face of banished cards. So the Cyber Dragons that you banish with this trap card, you can then later use Cyber Load Fusion and go for a fusion summon. This card's cool, so you can pop cards, get cards in the banish zone, and then use those cards in the banish zone to go for fusion summons. That's sick. Then we also have Telepathic Power. When a second monster controls destroy a battle with attacking monster, target the opponent's monster, destroy a target, and if you do gain life points, equal to destroy a monster on the field. That's not bad, especially for how heavy you're going to use your uh, psychic monsters. Because if you didn't already, psychic monsters love to get rid of their life points for effects, so if you can use this card to gain some life points back, not bad. Um, and then yeah, I guess we have like some other like just junk, junk related cards like Junk Collector. Which is, uh, you can move from play this face up card and one normal trap card in your graveyard to have this card gain the same effect to move from play a normal trap card. This effect can be activated during the player's turn. Not bad. Too bad it's a five star monster so it could be a little difficult to get into the graveyard. But still couldn't load less. We have Tuning Wear. This card can be treated as a level 2 monster when used for a Synchro Summon. This card sends for the graveyard for a Synchro Summon draw a card. So if you do special summon this card from the graveyard uh, with Junk Synchron, it won't be able to use that treated as level 2 monster for use of the Synchro Summon, I don't believe. But when it is sent to the graveyard for a Synchro Summon, uh, you can even if you did summon this card through Junk Synchron's effect, you should still be able to use its secondary effect where if this card's in the graveyard for a Synchro Summon draw a card. Because that effect's not negated no more after you go for the Synchro Summon with uh, Junk Synchron. Level Warrior, when there's no monsters in the field, you can summon this card as level 2 monster. If your opponent controls a monster, you can control no monsters, you can summon this card for your hands, level 4 or a monster. Oh, so if you really want to, you can use Level Warrior along with Junk Synchron to go into Junk Archer. Because you special summon Level Warrior, make it a level 4 monster, normal summon your Junk Synchron, and then go to the Junk Archer. So, there you go. Um, Endless Decay, what does this card do? If you have 2,000 life points left, special summon this card from your hand, well, this card's normal special summon, this card becomes half of the opponent's life points. That's, that's neat. It's not really super useful, but it's a neat card. Uh, what else is in this box? I think we pretty much covered everything. I mean, there's this junk card. You use following a junk changer once per turn. This card is normal, especially somebody can target a junk monster of the field, then activate its effect, increase level by one, or reduce level for one. Okay, not too crazy. Rapid Warrior, cool artwork. During your main phase one, you wait, main phase one? But we only got one main phase in this game. We don't got two of them. What the heck, Konami? During your main phase one, you can activate this card's effect, and if you do, it can attack your opponent directly this turn. Other monsters cannot attack during the turn you activate its effect. Um, yeah, cool. Nothing too crazy right there, but 
Eh, you could probably use this in some farms, maybe. Yeah, you could probably use this in farm decks. Oh, what? Well, still, even if you use it with Union Attack, it won't. Never mind. This card won't combo well with Union Attack, so probably not, but cool card. Maybe they're gonna add a main phase two, since they called main phase one right there. Crazy. And last card we're gonna take a look at is Synchro Fusion S. This card sends to the graveyard as Synchro Tier Monster. You can add a spell card from your deck to your hand with Polymerization or Fusion in the name, except the Fusion Wave Motion. So, yeah, there you go. You go for a Synchro Summon to your Junk Warrior with Junk Synchro and Synchro Fusion S, and then you can search for a Poly or Fusion and go, like, yeah, search for Neos Fusion and then summon an Elemental Euro Neos, Brave Neos. There you go. Other than that, these are a bunch of reprints right here. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's like Impulse. Tribute Psychic Type Monster, turn cards to your opponent's hand to the deck, then they draw three cards. Eh, I don't know how I feel about that card. Hero of Chance, target a hero of monster control. Double its attack, but it cannot attack your opponent directly. Oh, that's actually good, the combo with your other guy. So you can use Hero of Chance and combo it with uh, Warhammer. That's actually pretty good. Uh, Constellar, target a stellar monster control, increase level by one or two. Cards in the graveyard, you can banish the monster from the graveyard and add this card from the graveyard to your hand. Okay. And then... There's like one Constellar card right here. During a main phase, you can normal summon a Constellar in addition to normal summon a set. You only can gain this effect once per turn. Not bad. And then one of this card normal spell summon a Constellar's control, gain 5 on attack. And then this one, same thing. When normal summon, you can spell summon a Constellar monster from your hand and face the event position. Neato. This guy's a 6 star, so you can use Leonidas, use its effect, summon into this guy, and go from there. Now we should be done with this box. I believe we talked about pretty much everything right here, because then after this, there's just a bunch of reprints um, in this box. So, yeah, very, very cool. Very, very cool indeed. So, yeah, I'm honestly really looking forward to this box. After doing a second review on this box, I gotta say that so many decks seem fun to play. I wanna play a Yusei deck with Star to Spark Dragon. Cyber Dragon sound like a lot of fun to play. Super Heavy Samurai has piqued my interest. It's not a deck that I like absolutely wanna play, but it seems interesting. Thunder Dragon Duo is a card I'm looking forward to because I really wanna play it in my Chaos Dragon deck. Um, Giant Rat for summoning its a little D. Top tier meme right there. Cyframe seem cool. Probably not gonna be a good deck, and I'm probably gonna get frustrated trying to win with this deck, but it seems like a cool archetype. Um, Hero of Challengers seem like a fun deck to play in like a duel room or something like that. So overall, I think this box is a lot of really cool stuff, and I'm honestly really looking forward to this thing right here. So there you go right there but yeah we're gonna be wrapping up the live stream right here uh for everybody that's brand new to my youtube channel and has not already be sure to subscribe to the youtube channel because like in an hour or two from now i'm going to be releasing a video on my thoughts and opinions on the new upcoming updates because dual links release a new upcoming update so be on the lookout for that and just for all of you guys that are watching the stream right now please show your support on the upcoming updates video when i do release that so that you guys can hear all my thoughts and opinions on the new upcoming updates and all that good stuff right there because i think some of you guys are really hyped for the upcoming updates so I'm hoping that January is going to start up strong. My educated guesses on that is that we're probably going to be getting uh, some confirmation on an Agami or Yugi Moto event because normally what Duel Links likes to do is that they like to release um, popular characters from a new world. Like, for example, like GX World, I believe they released... I believe... Wait. Which one did they release? They either released Jesse Anderson in January or somebody else. I forgot what the popular character they released in there, but I know like the popular character they released in January for 5D's World was Jack Atlas. Jack Atlas was like a confirmed character um, for 5D's World and released him in January. So I'm gonna assume they're probably gonna get like a Gami or something like that. Um, so that's like one of my predictions. Uh, they, they all announced Misty getting added into Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Don't worry about it right there. Dude, Star Star Dragon is so epic. I genuinely agree, Sam. I'm looking forward to that card. It's gonna be sick. Omega Lol. Um, and then yeah, hopefully there's some other really cool updates. I hope that we get some really cool events to be looking forward to January because like my first two weeks in January I got like nothing like my next two weeks at work. I have like barely any work So I'm gonna need some duelings content to keep me entertained so I can make content for you guys So if everything works out well, there should be a lot of content in January And I'm hoping that the upcoming updates will support a lot of content coming into January because like now that the holidays are done I'm gonna be getting like barely any hours at work, so I'm gonna have to start pushing my YouTube so I can get some good income and stuff like that, right? Uh, you didn't say anything about Night Watchman from the upcoming box. You never answered my question about Stardust. Um, I believe I did. If, like, what was your question about it? Were you just asking why I called it Stardust Charge Dragon by accident? Because I answered that in Discord, I just didn't ping anybody about it. 
Um, the reason why I called it Stardust Charge Dragon was, well, one, I didn't even know I said that. Like, I legit did not remember me saying Charge a Star or Stardust Charge Dragon during the video or during uh, editing the video because I just didn't notice that. I'm guessing the reason why my brain said Charge instead of Spark is because there's uh, that Stardust Charge Warrior card um, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links because they called some of the Stardust cards Stardust Charge. Um, so that's just why I got confused, but yeah, there's like nothing crazy right there. Yeah, Chase the Seven, don't spoil anything like that. That's that it's very rude of you. Uh, but actually, that's not a surprise. Like that is a spoiler. That's for sure. That actually kind of ruins the video. Oof! Can't believe you spoiled it, homie. But that's not a surprise. We actually had some leaks, uh, kind of hinting towards that, anyways. So. There you go right there. But yeah, no, I'm going to wrap up the stream right here. I'm going to go record my upcoming updates video for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys so much for watching today's box review video. We had a consistent 100 viewers the entire stream. So I really hope you guys enjoy it. And like I said already, please be sure to support my upcoming updates video when I do release that on my YouTube channel. I'm going to need all the support that I can get for that video. So I really appreciate it. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching today's stream. And I'll go see you guys in the next one, man. How? Goodbye, everybody.